spectacular fall day in picturesque Oxford, Ohio. The sixth oldest rivalry in college football is renewed. It's Cincinnati against Miami here at Jaeger Stadium. A very pleasant good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our coverage of Bearcat football here on Fox 19. I'm Dan Horde. We could very well witness college football history today. Miami running back Travis Prentice enters this game with 72 career touchdowns. That is three short of Ricky Williams' NCAA record. Travis has scored three or more touchdowns in a game 10 times in his career. Working with me today, as always, former UC captain John Arena. This isn't the first time the Bearcats have faced a great running back this year. Year. They took on Wisconsin and Ron Dane. We all know how that game turned out. Yeah, UC played a great game against Wisconsin, no question. Today they're going to have to stop Travis Prentice. He's out, an outstanding uh, running back. He's uh, on pace to break a lot of records this season. On top of that, Mike Bath is a great quarterback. So Miami has a good balance attack and overall a good offensive game plan. UC is going to have to play an overall good defense to stop this team today. Blowouts are few and far between in this series, but we had one last year as Miami won 41 nothing. You played in four of these ball games, winning two and losing two. What's it like to be out on that field for the battle for the victory bell? Well, I can tell you this. It's very exciting. I'll tell you, both of these teams are excited. They're ready to play. Miami always prepares extremely well for the Bearcats, and I guarantee Rick Minner has this team ready to play. Last year was somewhat of a fluke. This season, let's hope it comes down to the fourth quarter, and we have a great football game. I know you wish you were out on the field again today. We'll be upstairs in the booth, but Andy Trinan will be our man on the sidelines. Andy? Guys, regardless of what Travis Prentice does, the Bearcats are going to have to score some points if they want to win this football game. And they don't want to have to throw the ball 59 times like they did last week to do it. What they're hoping for is an even mix with Robert Cooper on the ground and Deontay Kenner through the air. If you see that even balance in the UC attack, that's good news for Bearcat fans. It's Cincinnati against Miami. We'll see who brings home the victory bell when our coverage continues on Fox 19. The poet Robert Frost called Miami University the most beautiful campus he had ever seen. It lives up to that billing today. An absolutely picturesque setting for the 104th battle for the Victory Bell. We had a flyby moments ago. Quite a sight and sound. And John Arena, as we mentioned earlier, last year was a rarity, a blowout in this series. Right. In fact, the 41-0 final score was the most lopsided game of the previous 103. Both teams during the week said they expect this game to be decided late in the fourth quarter. You say that every week, but I think they were genuine this week. These two teams expect a nail-biter. Yeah, Dan, I think you're right on. And you look at the way both teams are set up right now. They both have a lot of injuries. Miami has many more returning starters than the Bearcats do, but if you look at what UC has done this year, they've played pretty well offensively and defensively under the new leadership, having two new coordinators. So let's hope that the game plan this year can keep them in the game and put them in a position to win at the end. And, and likewise with Miami, they've got enough talent to spread it around and have a real nice offensive show today as well. UC head coach Rick Minter coaching in his 64th game at the University of Cincinnati. And as a result, he ties an all-time record held by Sid Gilman for longest tenure. Terry Hepner in his first year as the head coach at Miami after 13 years as an assistant. He took over for Randy Walker after Walker became head coach in the Big Ten at Northwestern. Miami will kick off this afternoon. The Bearcats obviously will receive. And there's a look at the oldest series west of the Allegheny Mountains. This is meeting number 104. The first one ended in a 0-0 tie. We can promise you that will not be the case this afternoon. Punter Kent McCullough does the kickoff duties for the Red Hawks. Antonio Chapman coming off a big game against Southern Miss back deep to receive for the UC Bearcats. A crowd estimated in the 25,000 range filing in and still filing in here at Jaeger Stadium. And it's going to be Ty Keith taking the kickoff at the goal line for Cincinnati. He sidesteps a tackle at the 15, gets to about the 21. And that's where Cincinnati's offense, led by Deontay Kenner, will begin the game. Really hope for a big game for uh, Deontay Kenner today. He's, as you can see with his numbers now, he's played very well. Last week, he had a career day, passing for over 400 yards. If he can keep on that pace and that track, it's going to continue to build the momentum of this offense. 409 yards passing last week against Southern Miss as he joined Greg Cook as the only quarterbacks in UC history 
to pass for 400 or more yards in a game. The Bearcats spread it out on offense under new offensive coordinator Jimbo Fisher. Three wide receivers and one running back. That running back is Robert Cooper. He'll carry up the middle on first and 10, and he gets to the 23-yard line for a three-yard game. Let's take a look at the Bearcats' offensive alignment. Mike Love, Andy Weinheimer, Doug Rosfeld, Dwayne Johnston, and Josh Gardner form the front wall. Kenner is the quarterback. Cooper and Garden, when he plays, are the running backs. Chapman and Van, young wide receivers. Ashley Hunt, a good receiver who's been hurt for much of this year, is back in there today at tight end. Kenner back to the shotgun on second down and seven. They fake a handoff out of the shotgun, and Kenner will be dropped at the line of scrimmage. A fine play by the Miami defense as Kurt Mester sniffed it out and made the tackle. And now let's look at that Miami defense. Petrovic, Arakri, Terry, and Mester up front. Mester making the tackle on that last play. The linebackers, Cohen, Yeager, and Richardson. The defensive backs. Adams, Godsey, Hammond, and McCullough. McCullough had a big game against the Bearcats last year. Double-digit tackles and an interception against UC. The Bearcats in an obvious passing situation. Third down and seven on their first possession. Kenner generally gets rid of it quickly. This pass appears to have been picked off. Yes, it is. It is intercepted by Miami as Demario Jones picks off Deontay Kenner's first pass of the afternoon. You can see their defense is very disciplined. They're staying home. They're not falling for any of the fakes. Take a look at the replay here. Typical four wide receiver set. Kenner drops back to pass. Throws it right into coverage. That was a good defensive play. UC's defense is going to be checked here now. They're going to have to step up and make a big play. Great field position for the Red Hawks. Travis Prentice carries on the first offensive play of the game. He sidesteps Tinker Keck close to the line of scrimmage and goes out of bounds just inside the 20 yard line. Prentice leads this Miami offense. There is the front line, Lubke, Thaler, Califatis, Hillsman, and Costello up front. Mike Bath, the junior quarterback. Nick Monk, the H-back. Prentice, the halfback. Sullivan's the tight end. Sexton and Gaylor are the wide receivers. Miami lost a great wideout early this year with an injury to Sly Johnson. Travis Prentice on the screen is dropped for a loss as Gary Ruff getting his first start at strong safety comes up to make the hit as he saw the screen pass coming to Travis Prentice. That's one thing they're going to try to use Prentice to get the uh, little short pass out to the flat. He's a good receiver out of the backfield. As you can see there, jumped up, got the ball. He was able to hold on to it when he took the big hit. Travis Prentice does not fumble the football very often. Third down and nine for Miami. The Red Hawks go to three wide receivers. A short drop for Bath. His pass dropped by Trevor Gaylor, who would have had a first down at the 14-yard line. Tinker Keck in coverage, and Miami is looking at a field goal try and a fairly long one. We'll quickly look at the Bearcat defense. Ransom, Super Mario Mons, Elliott and Adams up front. Evans, Johnson, and Carter are the linebackers. Burrow, Fields, Keck, and Gossett are the defensive backs. This will be a 42-yard field goal attempt for a new kicker this year for Miami. Andy Brumberg's a six foot five inch kicker. His longest of the year is 42 yards. He will try to equal that from the right hash mark. The snap is good, the kick is up, it is long enough, and it is good. Andy Brumberg's connects from 42 yards out, and the Red Hawks are on the scoreboard first with a three nothing lead about two minutes and 15 seconds into the game. I can think of a lot worse places to spend a beautiful fall day than Oxford, Ohio. What a gorgeous October afternoon for football. Miami on the scoreboard first. Thanks to an interception by Nickelback Demario Jones. He gave the Red Hawks great field position. It resulted in the 42-yard field goal by Andy Brumbergs. This is Chapman for UC. And he will be dropped short of the 20-yard line. Jeffrey Bowman forcing a turnover, and Miami has the football again. This is exactly what the Bearcats did not want to happen. you got to eliminate the things that cause you to lose football games, and right now, the Bearcats are beating themselves. Oh, 
He's got the ball tucked away. Great job stripping the football. Bowman forced the fumble by sticking in his right arm. And did it roll right to him? Yes, it did. Well, that, was a, that was a great play, great special teams play. And after starting one drive at the 21, Miami starts this one at the 17. And the first down handoff gets to the 15. Captain Eddie Johnson tackling Travis Prentice. Touchdown, Travis. That is his nickname and the name of his website. You know, you've never checked it out. You know, Dan, when you start off in, in this type of situation, right now you see his face with adversity, and uh, they've lost quite a few games this year, so they need to really get the leadership up so they can regain their poise. Second down and eight from the 15 of Cincinnati. Bath might be calling out an audible. Three receivers in the game on second and eight. Bath with a short drop, and he overthrows the intended receiver, Ty Buxton. Defense is doing a nice job playing with a lot of emotion. You know, as leaders on defense, when your team is down and adversity hits, you got to suck it up, pull up your bootstraps, and get your team to rally around the small successes that you need to create. Defensively, they're doing that right now. They need to get their special teams in order. They need to get their offense back on the field to get their confidence up. Last week, Cincinnati fell behind 28-0 at Southern Miss. Came back to make it a ball game, but it's been a tough way to operate all season. Penalty flags on this play. Travis Prentice makes the catch. He'll go down close to the line of scrimmage. We had a flag at the start of the play, and then one came in late. So we might have different penalties. Dante Elliott making the play defensively for Cincinnati. You know, Dan, you mentioned earlier on the fact that uh, UC has really started poorly in the first half the last several games. Talking to the coaching staff this week, it's one of those things where they do scratch their head and they say, why is there such a difference and why are they so unbalanced? And the penalty is offsides against Cincinnati. So the Red Hawks will have another shot at picking up a first down. It's fairly hard to see. Troy, Troy Evans was the blitzing linebacker. Yeah. I wonder if he got a head start and crossed the neutral zone before the snap. His head probably just popped over right uh, just prior to the snap and as the snap went off. It's one of those things defensively when you blitz you got to time it up and it's there's somewhat of a risk there and sometimes you just get bit and this, that time they did. So Miami would have been looking at another field goal attempt instead on third down and three. The Red Hawks have another shot at picking up a first down. They line up in the eye behind Bath. Nick Monk the fullback. Travis Prentice obviously the tailback. It's a handoff to Prentice. He's forced to go wide and he slips. Jeff Burrow makes the tackle. Greg Lee did a nice job of getting into the backfield and forcing Prentice to change direction. Andy Brumbergs will run back out and try another field goal. That was the second time you saw Bat or, uh, Prentice slip. You wonder if he has the right shoes on or if he has a little bit too much tape around the bottom of the shoe. Sometimes when these players get out, they, they call it spat their shoes. They wrap them up in, in tape to keep their shoes tight on their feet. And when they do that, they take away some of their traction. So earlier on in the game, you see some more slippage than you do later on because that tape is still fresh. This will be a 30-yard field goal for Brumbergs. He hit from 42 earlier. The kick is up, and it is good. So Miami has capitalized on two Cincinnati turnovers, an interception by Deontay Kenner, a fumble by Antonio Chapman, and with 10.59 left in the first, it's 6-0 Red Hawks. Six foot five inch freshman Andy Brumbergs replaced a great kicker at Miami this year, John Scott. He entered this game with three field goals all season. He's been perfect on his first two today as the Red Hawks are on top six nothing. But John, I would think the Bearcats actually have to feel okay about that because Miami has had sensational field position and had to settle for two field goals. Uh, Rick Smith, UC's defensive coordinator, should be very pleased. They stepped in with their backs against the wall and held them to two field goals. I'll tell you one thing I'm amazed at is Brumberg's the tallest kicker I've ever seen. Six foot five, that's the biggest kicker I've ever seen in my life. He's a, he's, he looks like he could be on a basketball team. As far as I know, Manute Bowl did not kick <laughs> back in his college days. Ty Keith takes it one step deep in the end zone. He will try to run it back. And Ty Keith is able to get up close to the 20-yard line. Gary Richardson 
Linebacker out of Hamilton High making the tackle for Miami. And let's check in with sideline reporter Andy Trinan. Guys, when you go on the road into a hostile environment, you can't afford to make mental mistakes. And so far, the Bearcats have made three of them with the interception, the fumble, and the offsides on the, on the defense. That's why Miami's leading this game six to nothing. All right, thanks, Andy. And again, nothing new for the Bearcats, who in their last three games have been way behind. They've come back to make it interesting, forced overtime in one of those games, but they have dropped four straight. First and 10 for the 19, three receivers in the game. The running back is Robert Cooper. Cooper runs left. Mike Love with a good block. And Cooper gets to the 25-yard line for a six-yard game. It's going to be important right now, again, for everyone to keep their poise. Adversity has hit. All they need to do is just get together a nice little drive, run the ball, pass the ball like they do, and just continue a nice balanced attack. And that's what they're designed to do offensively. The offense has not coughed the ball up this year like it did last year. 16 fumbles lost last year, only four this year. And the offense has actually only cost them a two lost fumbles. The other two have been on special teams. Bad snap there. The ball's on the ground. The Red Hawks say they have it. And the officials agree. Cincinnati commits its third consecutive turnover. All three have come inside the Bearcats' 25-yard line. That is simply unbelievable. Rick Minner right now has got to be ready to tear his hair out. Sophomore Bob Petrovic comes up with that fumble after Deontay Kenner did not get a clean snap from Doug Rossfeld. I'll tell you, the audience would probably be interested to know that the center, uh, Dougie Rossfeld, was injured part of the week and was unable to take a lot of snaps through practice. Little things like that start to add up, and you get a little bit of rust on you as far as that quarterback center exchange. First and 10 from the Bearcat 23-yard line. Bath will run the option. It's a pitch to Prentice. He nearly lost the football, and he gets to the 21-yard line. Jeff Burrow got there first, couldn't bring him down. Troy Evans completes the tackle for Cincinnati. Well, you hope right now that the Bearcats can again get a quick three and out, hopefully hold to just a field goal. Because right now, when your back's against the wall in the red zone like they are, you get tired fairly quickly. And your emotions running and everything, you start to get short-winded. And this is early on in the game, they can't afford to get tired now. A two-yard gain for Prentice, who has nine yards on his first four carries. This is touchdown Travis again. And he will be dropped at the 20-yard line after a one-yard gain. Good firm hit by Dewan Gossett, the Bearcats' free safety. You know what's nice about Gossett is now he's at free safety. He's four yards back to, uh, from where he usually lined up last year at outside linebacker. The difference there is when you're four yards removed from the line of scrimmage, you have more time to read the uh, offensive backfield and adjust to what's happening. That's why he's made so many plays this year. And how about those numbers we just saw for Travis Prentice? 43 carries in Miami's most recent game, and he also caught four passes in that game, handling the ball 47 times. On third down and seven, Gaylor goes in motion. Bath throws for Gaylor. It's picked off by Gary Ruff. Cincinnati comes up with a turnover. And Ruff gets to the 47-yard line of Miami. Travis Prentice makes the touchdown-saving tackle. The pass was intended for Gaylor. It was a bit high, went off his fingertips, and Gary Ruff comes up with his first interception as a member of the UC Bearcats. What a great opportunity for Ruff to come in and contribute right away. Tremendous momentum swing is going to take place right now. He takes her up the field. Prentice comes in, hard worker, makes a tackle, saves a touchdown. If Prentice wasn't there, the offensive lineman weren't going to be able to run him down. He would have taken it to the house. So Cincinnati gets good field position for the first time, beginning at the Miami 47-yard line. Kenner operates out of the shotgun. Five receivers in this formation. He will run the quarterback draw, and he is dropped immediately by Miami's best defensive player, Dustin Cohen, out of Summit Country Day. He's an outstanding linebacker. You see, D Miami has six returning starters on defense. These guys are disciplined. They've watched UC's tendencies. It's going to be hard to bait them this early in the game to a quarterback draw. They're going to need to open up the passing game first to soften that defense. Gary Ruff accepting congratulations after the interception. Ruff made his first start today. He started at strong safety, and Tinker Keck moved to cornerback. On second down and nine, again, five receivers. 
A little dump pass over the middle to Robert Cooper, and it is busted up by Ryan Terry on the defensive line. Right now, I'll tell you, the Miami defense is just smothering the line of scrimmage. They're holding the receivers very tight, so they're not giving up that little five-yard out pattern. And uh, inside, they're staying very disciplined. There are Deontay Kenner's record-setting numbers last week against Southern Miss. 35 completions ties a school record. 59 attempts is a new school record. 407 yards, second best in UC history. On third down and nine. Kenner with time, completes it to Antonio Chapman. He has a first down before slipping at the 29-yard line. Vercellis Hammond, the nearest defensive back, as the Bearcats pick up their first first down of the afternoon. You see Chapman here in the replay. Just does a nice clean route, wasn't even covered. Good pitch and catch. I'm surprised so many people are slipping out there today. The, the turf feels like it was uh, fairly dry prior to the game. First and 10 from the 29. Miami leads this ball game 6-0 on two field goals. Robert Cooper with a hole up the middle. He has a first down. He has a touchdown. A 29-yard touchdown run for senior Robert Cooper. And the Bearcats have tied it at six with a chance to take the lead on the extra point. That was exactly what they needed, a big play to help loosen up that Miami defense, and Cooper delivered once again. Fourth touchdown run of the year for Robert Cooper, who entered this game averaging 108 yards rushing per game. That's 17th best in the country. True freshman kicker Jonathan Ruffin connects. Extra points and field goals have been a problem all year for UC, but that one is good, and the Bearcats have the lead for the first time this afternoon. 8.36 left in the first quarter. It's Cincinnati 7, Miami 6. Cincinnati has the lead 7-6. Miami has been hurt by injuries at linebacker this year. Seven different players have started at linebacker. The Bearcats going right up the gut there and taking advantage of it. Robert Cooper with a 29-yard TD. Nice job of the offensive line clearing out a good running lane for Cooper. And on the ensuing kickoff, it looked like Miami was going to be stopped. And number 25, Steve Little, somehow sniffed out a hole and gives Miami great field position. The when that happens, Jonathan Ruffin makes the play. I'll tell you what, Dan, that's a, a momentum shift right back to Miami. Your special teams can get you in or get you out of a game. And Miami special teams right now have been outstanding. Keeps his feet, keeps his balance, and bounces it outside. When you hit a guy and you're on a coverage team, you got to wrap them up because there's such a cluster of people, you can bounce it outside just like you've seen there. So Miami starts at its 47-yard line, trailing by a point with 8.24 left in the first quarter. Mike Bath looks to pass. Pump fake and a bomb. Gaylor is wide open. He makes the catch at the 14. He is tackled by Tinker Keck at the 11. Tinker Keck making a rare start at quarterback was burned on the pump fake and Trevor Gaylor sprinted behind him for the huge game. Trevor Gaylor, he's a tall receiver, 6'4", 192 pounds. As you can see, what Bath does so nicely is he baits him right there. Boom, that pump fake gets all the cornerbacks to freeze. Gives Trevor Gaylor that separation he needs to make a nice catch. A 42-yard gain for Trevor Gaylor, who had a huge game against Cincinnati last year. Touchdown, Travis Prentice up the gut. Stopped at the one-yard line by Gary Ruff and the Red Hawks in two plays are knocking on the door. Miami's offense looks very explosive right now. We said it in the open. They've got the balance going. Passing game, that starts to open up the running game. You get the running game going again, it starts to open up the passing game. Works both ways. So Travis Prentice, who entered the game three touchdowns short of tying the all-time NCAA record held by Ricky Williams, will get a shot at his first today. You can guarantee he's about to get the football, I think. <laughs> Bath to Prentice. Touchdown number 73 for Travis Prentice. His first this afternoon. And Miami pulls back in front, 12-7. 
Boy, Miami opened it up. Like we said, the momentum shift took place on special teams. Offensively, they capitalized. Big, play, big pass play, nice run, punching in for the touchdown. With a five-point lead, some teams would opt to go for two, but Miami will try to tack on the extra point. Andy Brumberg's to do the kicking. He's only missed once this season. Slightly high snap, but handled nicely by the punter, McCullough, and the kick is good. Miami has a six-point lead, racing down the field to score as Travis Prentice picks up career touchdown number 73. Prentice is such an outstanding back. He's a go-to back. He's one of those people where everybody in the stadium, everyone in the booth knows he's going to get the ball. You still can't stop him. So Travis Prentice again, now two touchdowns behind it. Last year's Heisman Trophy winner, Ricky Williams, for the all-time NCAA record. That TD also gives Prentice 438 career points. He is 14 points shy of an NCAA record held by Ricky Williams. It is also his 32nd game with at least one touchdown. That is one game short of Ricky Williams' NCAA record. You watch a guy like Prentice run the ball, and look how often he's hit behind the line of scrimmage, but doesn't go down. That's the key is he can get hit, you know, by one or two players, but you have to drag him down, similar to like Ron Dane earlier this season. He'll get that extra yard. Miami up 13-7, a very entertaining first quarter thus far. The punter, McCullough, kicks it toward the sideline. It'll be taken at the seven-yard line. Cincinnati and Ladaris Van getting up to the 27-yard line. Steve Little, who had the nice kickoff return for Miami, makes the tackle on special teams. First and 10 Bearcats at the 28-yard line. Whenever, whenever you start off like this in the first quarter, every time there's a special teams play or even a running play, I know that the UC staff is cringing, just hoping that a fumble doesn't take place for another big play. So uh, their, their nerves, I'm sure, right now are on edge. Three plays, 53 yards on Miami's most recent scoring drive. The big play, the long pass to Trevor Gaylor. Out of the shotgun, a short pass taken by Tony Smichael. And he's dropped at the 33-yard line. Bob Petrovic and Michael Adams combining to make the tackle for Miami. The key right now is that is the Cincinnati offense. Throw those nice short passes out to the field and loosen up that defense, open up the running game for Cooper up the middle. What you did see is with Cooper breaking that big run, now they have to respect that a little bit. It's going to keep the linebackers at home, hopefully open up some more passing lanes for Deontay to pick at. A six-yard gain on that pass. Second down and four. They fake a handoff to Cooper. Kenner's pass is incomplete. Ladaris Van was on the ground, and yet another player slips. Brian Potter in coverage for Miami. Very impressive discipline by the Red Hawks. They're doing a really nice job staying at home and not biting for the play-action fakes. Well-coached football team. Miami's always coached real well. As far as their overall discipline, they usually don't make a lot of mistakes, and they usually don't uh, get baited very often on play-action plays. It's being evident today. It certainly helps explain why they are 5-2 and two this year after going 10-1 and one last year. They didn't have to face Marshall every year. They'd only have one loss the last two seasons. That's right. Kenner under pressure, in trouble, and it is intercepted by Jaeger. Mike Yeager intercepts the deflected pass, the second interception served up by Deontay Kenner in the first quarter. Well, you saw Deontay did not have somebody open. He tried to force the football. He forced the football like that. Mistakes are going to happen. Good job by Mike Yeager just being alert, seeing the ball up in the air, making the play. Jaeger, a Cincinnati uh, high school player for Indian Hill High School. And Miami has great field position again. The screen pass for Prentice, overthrown. And if Ruff had gone after the ball and not Prentice, he would have had a touchdown. Ruff's doing a nice job coming up quickly and uh, 
getting the Prentice coming out of the backfield. Very impressive. He's really doing a nice job reading the backfield. This is the fifth time Miami has had the football in the first quarter. Their worst field position was at their own 47. That's no way to play defense, I'll tell you that. It makes it difficult. Path looks to throw. A pump fake and a sack. Eddie Johnson coming up the middle from his middle linebacker position. And Mario Mons with Cincinnati's first sack of the day. It's good to see Mario Mons really coming into his own. Split a double team and made the play. Mario Mons is one of those guys, like you said earlier, they call him Super Mario, and they also call him Sunday Mario, because sometimes he plays so well, he's got NFL talent written all over him. He originally went to the University of Alabama before having some academic difficulties, went to a junior college, and wound up at UC. On third down, a diving catch by the tight end, Mike Sullivan, but he will be just short of a first down. That was a great catch by Sullivan. He looked it in and just pulled it right up to his chest. Nice catch. It's going to be fourth down and three, and the kicker, Brumsburgs, will come back into the ball game. That's great concentration there. That's a really nice catch. Tell you what, if Bath hadn't thrown it quite that far, yeah. as you can see, Sullivan had loads of running room. Boy, he really did. Does set up a 41-yard field goal opportunity for the freshman, Brumbergs. By the time the ball leaves his foot, though, it's a 39-yard kick. <laughs> he is tall and lanky, and it is good. Andy Brumbergs with an active first quarter. Three field goals already, and Miami has a nine-point lead. For as bad as UC has played in this first quarter, they're lucky that they're not down by a greater uh, point differential than they are right now. Well, this looks like Cincinnati from last year. Right. The turnovers absolutely killed the Bearcats in a 2-9 and nine season. Coming into this game, Cincinnati was actually among the national leaders in turnover margin. Well, I'll tell you, men are stressed all year long and in preseason that we're going to eliminate the things that make us lose football games. And they've done a great job cutting down on the amount of fumbles that take place. They come into Miami, and for whatever reason, they get haunted by uh, some of the fumble problems and turnovers that they had last year. I'm sure right now he's very upset and he's probably talking a lot about protecting the football and playing smart football, not trying to force the big play. Entering the game, Cincinnati was 12th in the country in turnover margin, but in the first quarter, the Bearcats have committed four turnovers and forced one. You'll, sleep, you'll slide down the national rankings like slipping out of grease pole when you play the first quarter like they have thus far. McCullough's kick will be taken at the one yard line by Chapman. He fumbled his last kickoff return. He bounces off a big hit and has room to run. Brian McCullough will force him out of bounds at the 34 yard line. Good job of bouncing off a big stick by Antonio Chapman. Chapman's done a nice job all year adding some good quality big play potential to the special teams. He's got the tools. It was good to have him on the roster this year. Did a nice job switching the ball over to his left left arm. You know, you start to see happen when you're down is you start to see guys, which is nice, going for that extra effort. But when that takes place, sometimes you, you get loose with the football. So guys got to make sure they hold that football tight. Cincinnati is going to be called for wide receiver Ladaris Van lining up over the line of scrimmage. It's easy to spot from here. Robert Cooper carried, Mike Yeager made the tackle, but Ladaris Van had his foot on the 35-yard line, and the line of scrimmage was the 34. Again, you got to pay attention and uh, eliminate the little mental errors. Right now, Dan, this is where vocal leaders really do help. I know that Doug Rossfeld, the center, Moeller High School is a very vocal leader, and uh, Cooper is a vocal leader as well. They have to talk these guys out of the slump they're in and get them back on and focusing about football. You can't think about what happened. You got to focus on what it takes to get it done from this point on. We still have four and a half minutes left in the first quarter. The Bearcats have committed four turnovers, had some costly penalties, and they're looking at first down and 15. Van goes in motion. He's not offside this time. Go, 
Cooper carries up the middle. And Coop gets to the 34-yard line. The Rock, Andy Arakri, coming off a tremendous game against Kent, where he had 13 tackles as a defensive lineman. And he made the tackle of Robert Cooper on that play. Arakri really came into his own last year against the Bearcats. He's a strong, strong physical player. His name's The Rock on the team. And uh, again, like you said last week, had a, just a great game. Made a ton of tackles for a big interior lineman. It's very impressive. Leads the conference in sacks with seven and tackles for losses with 19. Four yard gain for Cooper, second down and 11. Kenner looks to throw, has a man open, and it's caught by Ladaris Van. Tackled by Michael Adams at the 45 yard line. The Cats need to get to about the 40. 45 to get a first down, so that should be one for Cincinnati. They may have marked it a couple inches short. They may have to pull the sticks out and measure this one. So they may be about an inch or two short. That means Robert Cooper is probably going to get called upon. Third down and about an inch. We'll see if Kenner sneaks if Cooper doesn't get it. It is Cooper. He has the first down and more as he puts his head down and gets to midfield, running over Versella's Hammond in the process. One thing about Cooper, Coop's whole philosophy is similar to Walter Payton. Right before you tackle me, I'm going to make sure I give you a, a nice blow and make you remember this tackle attempt. Good job running him over. At Miami, they call those trucks. It's like being run over by a truck. That's right. They keep a stat for that for Travis Prentice. He has more than 150 trucks in his career. He does a great job delivering a blow right before he gets tackled. Cooper again, and this time there is no room at all. Mike Yeager and Dustin Cohen, the great linebackers for Miami, combine to make the tackle. Dustin Cohen's really the total package. You look at his size, he's 6'4". You look at his weight, he's 245. He kind of reminds you physically of uh, Andy Katzmoyer, who played for Ohio State last year, now with the uh, Patriots. He's a real solid player, and he's got great NFL potential right now. He's got the total package. One of the Miami coaches referred to him, number 46, Dustin Cohen, as a genetic freak. <laughs> To have that height, that size, and his speed. Very quick, yeah. Second down and nine. A receiver slipped, and Vercellis Hammond could not have had an easier interception. Perhaps it was so easy that he carelessly dropped the football. That's one of those plays where Hammond probably got so shocked that the ball hit him in the chest like that, and the reflexes just aren't there. He said you saw Cohen there put a lick right on Dante Kenner as he threw the ball. You see, it was very lucky. They could have had uh, disaster on that play. If Hammond would have picked that off, he would have taken all the way to the house. So it'll be third down and nine for Cincinnati. 2.43 left in the first quarter. Miami leads Cincinnati 16 to seven. Out of the shotgun. Kenner looks left, throws over the middle, and it is close to a first down. As Ladaris Van makes the catch, a penalty flag comes in late. Free safety Brian McCullough makes the tackle for the Red Hawks. Should be on Miami. He caught the ball in the range to get the first down. You see Larry Zerline's over on the sideline screaming, saying, hey, mark this ball where he caught it. Don't push it back. Got a little meeting of the minds down there on the field. Probably determining the spot and the penalty. Yeah. So it's defensive pass interference. Van clearly has passed the first down marker as he makes the catch at the 38 before being driven back to the 40. They have marked it at the 39. Hmm. It's a nice little break for Cincinnati to keep the drive alive. Right now, as they approach the red zone, they haven't been here the whole game. It'll be interesting to see what type of uh, game plan they put together to punch it in the end zone. Defense, five foul, automatic first down. So the Bearcats take the penalty, which gives them the automatic first down, since the mark might have come up short.
It's Cooper on first and 10. And he moves it three yards to the 36. Miami's gonna know that when Cincinnati's in an eye back formation, they're gonna run the football. That's that's what their tendencies show and all the game film continues to reinforce that. So it puts a lot of pressure on that offensive line. They got two backs in the backfield. They got to buckle it up, come off the, the, the uh, ball flat back and drive these guys off the ball a little bit. Seven carries for 54 yards for Robert Cooper. Cooper on misdirection. Does a great job of picking through several would-be tacklers. Brian McCullough finally brings him down, and Cooper is very close to another Cincinnati first down. That was a great run by Coop. Coop did, Coop's one of those backs. He doesn't really do tremendous, outstanding breakaway runs, but he's just a gritty, hard runner that continues to get good yardage. That's why he's climbing up the list of the all-time great backs in UC history. And they do give him credit for a first down. 62 yards in the first quarter for Robert Cooper compared to 22 for Travis Prentice, but Miami leads the game 16 to 7. Cooper up the middle, following his fullback, Lloyd Garden. Brian Potter and Brian down. McCullough combined for the tackle. And that looks like the left tackle, Mike Love, who is down for UC and getting up slowly. One thing they cannot do is afford to lose anybody right now, especially on the offensive line. They're extremely thin. Love started this season as a guard and had to be moved to tackle due to injury problems as it was. So they're thin on depth. Miami and UC are both very thin as far as depth goes. And uh, neither of the two teams can afford to lose anybody. Bill Walker and the training staff, along with physician Angelo Colosimo <laughs> attending the mic. I don't, I don't miss that, Dan. I remember uh, Bill Walker and Angelo running out there a couple times for me as well. That's, that's never a bright moment in your football career when you're laying on your back, cringing in pain for some reason. They do a good job, though. They'll rub a little dirt on there, a little spit, get him back on the field. He'll be fine. Oh, he's good to go. He'll miss one play and he'll be back out. There are Cooper's numbers in the first quarter. The big run for Coop, a 29-yard touchdown for Cincinnati's score. He's having a great day so far. The new left tackle is Andy Weinheimer, who moves from guard to tackle. As the Bearcats have to make some changes up front. Cooper up the middle, picks up another first down. Well, Coop's playing a good ball game. It's nice to see whenever you have to switch around the personnel, you can see right now Love's coming back in. Whenever you have to switch around the personnel, ideally if you can run the football, it's nice. Because everybody can run block from different positions, but pass blocking becomes very tricky when you move from guard to tackle and you shuffle your line around, especially with responsibilities of picking up blitzes. Ted Forrest was the lineman who came in for one play. First and 10 from the Miami 16. Inside of one minute to go in the first quarter, Cooper shoved forward as Potter makes another tackle. Four more yards for Robert Cooper. Looks at this point like they're gonna to continue to give it to Coop. You can see here, just pull him around the right side of that offensive line, follows his lead blocker. It's a nice game. Coop's a real north-south runner. He will always go right towards the uh, red zone, right towards Pater at the goal line. He'll drag some people with him when he gets there. Second and six from the 12. Cooper again. Big hole up the middle. Hey. Touchdown, Robert Cooper. His second of the ball game. He's closing in on 100 yards in the first quarter. He has 90 already on 12 carries, and the Bearcats have pulled within three with a PAT coming up. That was a super job, just keeping your poise. They, they put together a nice play they needed to, a nice drive, and they uh, capitalized on good, consistent football offensively. Led by Cooper, which is always nice to see. The freshman Jonathan Ruffin tacks on the PAT. And with 14 seconds left in the first quarter, <laughs> Miami has a two-point lead. Dan, I was looking over to see if it was halftime. So much excitement, so many things have taken place in one quarter of football. I'll tell you, we're, we're right now hopefully in for a great football game. Let's keep it balanced, let's keep it competitive, let's 
put a good game together for the fans. Another look at the 12-yard touchdown run by Robert Cooper, his second of the ball game. See, Dwayne Johnston pulled around there and led Cooper right to the end zone. See Dwayne Johnston, number 60, boom, picks up that block on a linebacker. That's what freed up Cooper for taking all the way up the middle. And in the first quarter alone, we've had three touchdowns, three field goals, and five <laughs> turnovers. Well, we can at least say we have not been bored, that's for sure, on this beautiful uh, fall afternoon. What a difference a year makes. Oh, yeah. As Miami won last year's game, 41-0. In taking the victory bell back to Oxford. The victory bell has existed since the 1800s. That's generally rare. Whenever you have a big rivalry, you look in the NFL, you look at any level, collegiately, NFL, you look in uh, high school football, when there's big rivalries, it's usually a pretty close game. Last year was a real fluke, and uh, Mitchell used that as leverage all week to get the guys ready. Steve Little makes a diving catch of the high short kickoff by Jonathan Ruffin. Jason Mamorelli generally does the kicking off for Cincinnati and usually boots it down close to the goal line, if not out of the end zone. Right. Today on both kickoffs, the freshman Jonathan Ruffin has been called upon and kicked it high and short. We were not uh, notified of an injury to Jason Mamorelli, but it's been Ruffin today. Yeah, it's been odd because Mamo generally is a good solid kicker that always kicks in the end zone so something must have happened to keep him off the field. Miami starts from the 21 with Travis Prentice. And Prentice is stopped at the 23. Eddie Johnson, one of Cincinnati's four captains. Boy, Troy Evans did a nice job changing his direction, just getting a hand on Prentice to slow him down. And that is the final play of the first quarter. What a quarter. Our score after one. The Miami Red Hawks 16, the UC Bearcats 14. Dan Horde and John Arena back in Oxford. As the battle for the victory bell has featured a tremendous first quarter, Miami leads Cincinnati 16-14. The Red Hawks with the ball to begin the second quarter, looking at second and eight from the 23-yard line. So far, it's been all Robert Cooper for the Bearcats. For Miami offensively, Prentice is playing strong, and Bass doing a good job, too. 90 yards in the first quarter for Cooper. This is Prentice picking and trying to find a hole as he gets up to the 26-yard line for three more yards. Greg Lee and Derek Adams up front make the stop for UC. You see 12 plays for 65 yards. Anytime you can get together a 10 or greater play drive, you generally can cash in some points. And UC did just that. Really nice job keeping their poise and getting uh, their heads back in the game. Prentice with 27 yards on nine carries. So the Cats have done a nice job of limiting him so far. You're not going to stop Travis Prentice. Right. He's roughly on a pace to get 100. They have done a nice job, really, if you look at... Uh, Bath throws for Prentice. It is caught. Eddie Johnson runs him down and makes the tackle, but it is a first down for Miami. That's what the scouts are going to love about Prentice, is he's the kind of player that, just like this, he can kill you on the run, but he can also kill you in the passing game. He's got really nice hands for a big running back. That's going to make him very marketable in the league. And those scouts have been around all year. Yeah. Be curious to see how high he does go in the draft. This is his backup, Steve Little, carrying on first and 10. Travis Prentice takes himself out when he wants a blow. The coaches say he has earned that right. That's he's smart. never pulled out of the lineup. That's smart. Keep yourself fresh. You know, he's the workhorse. And it's great when you got a coaching staff that believes in a player so much to say, hey, when you're tired, come out of the game. We're not going to think any less of you. Stay fresh, so you contribute, and make big plays. No game for Steve Little. It's second and 10. Bath with a straight drop. And the screen pass to Little. Little gets the first down. Gary Ruff finishes off Tinker Keck's tackle. And Miami will keep the drive alive. Let's take a look at some first quarter stats. Yeah, as you can see, rushing UC 
Cooper's done a real nice job, and that's been all Cooper right now, and they've slowed Prentice down. Time of possession, kind of surprising, but you see again is, is outweighing him there, and that's because they've had so many turnovers that Miami's been able to score pretty quickly. Four first quarter turnovers, two interceptions, two fumbles for UC. One interception for Miami. Prentice goes in motion on first and 10. It's a backward pass to Prentice. And Travis gets to midfield before Troy Evans runs him out of bounds. Miami offensive coordinator Greg Seaman, who was the Cincinnati offensive coordinator last season, really knows Cincinnati's personnel. And I think right here, as you can see, I think he sees something he likes. He likes Prentice right now coming out of the backfield, being utilized as a receiver. Because with his speed and his size, you get him in the open field, if he's got a five or six yard cushion, he's going to be hard to bring down. Nine runs for Prentice, three catches so far. So he's had the ball in his hands a dozen times. Gaylor going in motion toward the formation. It's a little pass to Trevor Gaylor. Slips away from Gary Ruff. Slips away from Troy Evans. And picks up a Miami first down. And there's a late penalty flag on the play. Well, Gaylor's one of those players that Bath is probably so happy to have back. He was out uh, part of last season from, a, from knee surgery, and uh, he did a really nice job rebounding. When you're a wide receiver or a running back and you have knee surgery, you never know how you're going to come back as far as having your head in the game and being real comfortable taking the hits, running and catching the ball over the middle. But uh, obviously, as you can see today, Gaylor's done a nice job stepping right back in, hasn't missed a beat. Miami picked up the first down. Then there's a penalty for that late hit after the play. Chris Calafatis came running in and delivered a lick on Tinker Keck. So Miami gets the first down, and then it'll be backed up 15 yards because of that personal foul. He's one of their team leaders. 44 yard line. He's one of their team leaders. He's a senior. He's got three letters. He's the strongest lineman on the team. 475 pound bench press. Hey, you see that? It reminds me of my offensive line coach, uh, who's now at Illinois. When I was at Cincinnati, he used to uh, give us awards if we they called them ticket takers. If anybody's lingering around the pile before the whistle blows, take them out. <laughs> That's what he always said. The handoff to Steve Little doesn't work as Derek Adams, a freshman defensive lineman, got great penetration and made the play. Ironically enough, uh, Miami, of, Miami of Ohio's, their offensive line coach is uh, John Peterson. Peterson worked for Harry Heastan when I played at Cincinnati as a graduate assistant and used to keep stats on the ticket takers that we did have. So I'm sure that he's got his guys coached up that if anybody's around the pile, take them out. Travis Prentice remains out of the ball game, although he is standing on the sidelines ready to come back in. Bath fires a completion over the middle for a first down. Ty Buxton with the catch. Isaac Thomas with the tackle. Move the chains as Miami picks up another first down. Wide open. Good balance football. Bath does a nice job of sitting in the pocket, keeping his poise, and he throws to the open receiver. As you can see here, he's wide open. But he's a good job just keeping his poise in the backfield, delivering the ball on time. Travis Prentice on the handoff will be dropped close to the line of scrimmage. Ben Peening with a tackle for UC. Peener, not Peening, another uh, Cincinnati Molar player. Ran into each other right there, gave Peening a little time to get to Prentice in the backfield. Call it a one yard gain, giving Travis Prentice 28 yards on his first 10 carries. Last year, Cincinnati shut him down for most of the first half, then he broke off a 55 yard touchdown run right. and went on to have a big game. Bath gets close to the first down marker as he's forced to scramble. Kirk Thompson with a tackle for Cincinnati. Last year, the Red Hawks were a uh, very strong in the option game, led by Bath. So right now, Greg Seaman, he's not a real big option guy. But what happens is you got a guy like Bath who used to run the option quite a bit. He's familiar with tucking the ball and running. You can see him right here. No run with confidence. And for a quarterback, a big, strong guy. He is big. He's 6'2", 225, and he benches 415 pounds. 
415 pounds. That's as strong as a lot of the linemen on that team. Third down and one. He didn't quite get the first down. Double tight ends. Sexton goes in motion. Prentice will carry. He gets the first down and gets to the 25 yard line. Tinker Keck and Gary Ruff make the tackle. That was a big, big hole. The offensive line did a great job just clearing everybody out. You give Prentice a hole like that, he's going to make it a five to seven yard gain easy. The Bearcats trying to strip the ball from Travis Prentice. Not going to happen. He's carried 1,034 times in his career and lost the ball, a ball twice. Gaylor is open. Touchdown, Miami. 26 yards as Mike Bath sold the fake beautifully and hit a wide open Trevor Gaylor. You got the Bath-Gaylor connection going on. You got the Travis Prentice show going on right now. This balance attack is going to be difficult to stop. So Miami is back on top by eight. Brumbergs will try to make it nine. And his kick is good. 9.44 left in the first half. And these two teams have combined for 37 points already. The score, Miami 23, Cincinnati 14. Welcome back to picturesque Oxford, Ohio, where the Miami Red Hawks are leading in the victory bell battle. It's 23-14 with 9.44. Left in the first half, Trevor Gaylor with a 26-yard touchdown catch, and Miami's taking advantage of a banged-up Cincinnati secondary. Oh, yeah, great slant pattern. It gets wide open. You've got Fuller out for the season, Bobby Fuller, who is one of their key players. You have Blue Adams, who, again, is one of their key cornerbacks. Cornerback's a funny position. You know, there's always a pretty good gap between the first string cornerbacks and the second team guys. You can see right now that the quarterbacks from Cincinnati are fairly green, and Miami's able to pick them apart. That 79-yard drive is Miami's longest all season, and Mike Bath, the quarterback, was perfect on it. He went six for six, culminating in the 26-yard TD throw. That's the kind of guy where when he gets hot, he's hard to stop. But Darius Van catches the ball at the 13. And the freshman out of Florida gets up to the 28-yard line. Let's check in with Andy Trinan. Guys, in the open, we talked about UC having to have a balanced offense, and they have putting 14 points on the board. But Miami is the team taking advantage of a UC defense that's focusing on Travis Prentice. The safeties are flying up to support the run, and that's how Trevor Gale is running free in the Bearcats secondary. And running free is absolutely right. Gaylor has two catches. He's been wide open on both of them, a 42-yard bomb, and then the 26-yard touchdown. Well, that's the difference between the Miami Redhawks and the uh, Wisconsin Badgers. The Badgers had Ron Dane. They don't have a good passing game. Miami's uh, a much more balanced offense. Cooper up the middle, and he picks up a yard. Arakri and McCullough combined for the tackle. Well, at least Wisconsin did not have a passing game when the Badgers faced Cincinnati. They have made a quarterback change since. Right. And the youngster, Brooks Bollinger, mm -hmm. has helped Wisconsin become the hottest team in the Big Ten. Yeah, they really needed to do something. You can only hang your hat on one player so long. And the Big Ten Conference is such a physical conference that uh, they're going to be able to shut down one weapon. You've got to have a pretty good balance to win football games in that conference. Cooper credited with two yards on that carry, so it's second and eight. Cooper with a catch. Up to the 36, that's three yards short of a first down. Mike Yeager, the six foot four senior linebacker, makes the tackle. A nice tackle by Yeager. Robert Cooper with 92 rushing yards already, has climbed to fifth all time at Cincinnati. And he has only been the starter, full time starter this year. Yeah, that's very impressive. When he's in, like we said, he just is a gritty player that gets yardage. You see on that list number three, David Small, I had the pleasure of playing with. 
great, great individual and a great running back as well. And he just bumped off Al McKinney, who I played with as well, who was the sixth uh, highest rusher in UC history. Third and three, Cohen coming on the blitz. Cincinnati picks up him nicely. Van cannot make a sliding catch. And Van did have separation on Demario Jones, the nickelback. Boy, Demario Jones did close pretty quickly to the ball, though. He could have potentially picked that one off. Cincinnati will punt for the first time all day. Their punt, uh, punt coverage this year has been very good. So hopefully they'll be able to be consistent, get down there and, and eliminate the return yardage. Cincinnati fifth in the country in net punting average when you figure in the return. Nice kick. Buxton driven back. There will be no return on this one. In fact, Cincinnati will stop it at the one yard line. Ivan Fields, part of the unit known as Adam and the Gunners. Adam being punter, Adam Wolfeck. An absolutely perfect punt that stopped at the one yard line. 7.52 left in the half, 23-14. Throughout the sports world, Miami University is recognized as the cradle of coaches because of the number of coaching legends who began their careers on the Oxford campus. They include that man, Bo Schembechler, 40-17-3 in his years in Oxford. Weeb Eubank was honored before today's game. He played for Miami and a street was named in his honor today. Weeb, of course, passed away last November. Paul Brown, another former Miami player, before going on to found the Cleveland Browns and, of course, the Cincinnati Bengals. Woody Hayes and Era Parsegian, among the other great college football coaches who have passed through Miami University. Miami starts this drive at its one-yard line. Prentice about eight yards deep in the end zone at the back of the eye. Travis runs up the middle and goes helmet to helmet at the three-yard line with Gary Ruff. This is Cincinnati's chance right now to get back in the game and get another momentum swing. If they can hold them here, force them to punt the football, they're going to have great field position, hopefully put themselves in a position where they can score. Three yards on the play for Travis Prentice, who's up to 39 yards in this game. Travis with one touchdown so far. He needs three to tie the NCAA record. Travis gets the first down as he gets up to the 13-yard line. Dewan Gossett driving him out of bounds. Travis Prentice is always one play away from breaking the big one. So UC's done a good job holding him uh, thus far, but any minute he can break that big play and rack up those yardage, the yardage on him. Dewan Gossett does a nice job consistently just bringing down people. He's such a sure tackler. He's one of the best tacklers on that defense. Travis will play in the Senior Bowl after this season. He runs up the middle. There's a penalty flag on the play. Eddie Johnson with a tackle for UC. But we might have a holding call on Miami. It was in the spot where holding is usually called. That'll be interesting to see how he does in the Senior Bowl. One thing that scouts look at in the NFL is they look at you as an individual, your size, your speed. But they're also going to tend to look at the people you play against. So it'll be nice to see him ranked against some top talent nationally and see how he does and performs under that type of uh, level of and competition. That, that's not the only uh, all-star bowl game that Travis is likely to play in. He yeah. also has invitations to the Hula Bowl and the Shrine Bowl. So he is going to have quite an opportunity to make his case as a possible first-round draft pick. He is universally listed as one of the top seniors among running backs in the draft coming up. On the offense, half the distance to the goal, still first down. Where he is picked is going to depend on how many teams need running backs. Right. I have heard high second round from most of the people I've talked to, but he could certainly sneak into the first if some teams really need running backs. If he does well in the combine in Indianapolis where they evaluate talent, and if he does well in the All-Star games, he can bounce into the first round. So that's going to be real critical for him. You know, you look at these kids now, That's that's that could be the difference in millions of dollars as far as signing bonus, sure. overall contract negotiations. So it's going to be important for him to do well in the combine and play well in the All-Star games. Earlier this year when Miami took on Bowling Green, 
The Cleveland Browns director of player personnel, Dwight Clark, was in attendance. Saw Prentice rush for 209 yards. And early this year, when the Chargers played the Bengals in Cincinnati's home opener, Bobby Beathard, San Diego's GM, spent two days on the Miami campus looking at Travis Prentice. That's impressive. On second and 17, Miami picks up a big chunk of the yardage as Buxton makes the catch before being tackled by Ruff. Not enough for a first down, but it will give Miami a third and two opportunity. You talk about Travis Prentice again, and he does he does uh, deserve a lot of attention because he's such a special player. But you know, you get a guy that can catch the ball in the backfield. He's a big physical back. He can run obviously extremely well, and he doesn't fumble the ball. That's, that's pretty a, good. Combo. That's a total package. Yeah, that's that's what they're looking for. And he never gets hurt. Yeah, durable as can be. Third down and two. It is Travis Prentice. He will not get the first down, but there is a penalty flag on the play. Good penetration by outside linebacker Lewis Carter. Speaking of Prentice and his durability, he not only has never missed a game at Miami, he has never missed a practice. That's impressive. That's impressive. That's the kind of guy that uh, coaches love. You got guys that are great players, sometimes they're gamers. You know, they come up for the big game, and, that, and there's nothing wrong with that. When you get a guy that's day in and day out in practice, he helps really increase the level of competition with people around him. It's a holding penalty against the Red Hawks. Should be declined since Miami will have to punt. Holding on the offense. Penalties declined. Fourth down. So Kent McCullough will punt, and he is a good one. He's a junior. He's been the starting punter since his first day on campus, and he was first-team freshman All-American, according to the Sporting News a couple of years ago. This is not a good kick. And it's going to give Cincinnati the football near midfield, a rare bad one for Kent McCullough, only 28 yards. Good opportunity for the Bearcats. We'll take a break. 544 left in the half. Miami leads by nine. Arena and Andy Trinan back at Jaeger Stadium, where the Miami Red Hawks lead Cincinnati 23-14. Robert Cooper winning the statistical battle against Travis Prentice. 92 yards to 48 yards, but Miami leads in the column that counts, 23-14. Mike Bath and Trevor Gaylor has been the difference offensively for the Red Hawks. This is Cooper, bounces off a tackle at the line of scrimmage, but doesn't get much. Petrovic and Hammond make the tackle. Oh, Petrovic did a nice job pursuing from the backside and making a play. Miami overall defensively is playing pretty solid football. They play smart, they don't give up the big play. And Cincinnati offensively thus far has been able to put together some nice big plays throughout the season to bring them back into the games. Cooper had one sort of today with the big run up the middle. They need to get a nice big pass play as well. Second down and seven. Cooper. Close to a first down before being tackled by Vercellis Hammond. That's been a good play for Cincinnati in passing situations or probable passing situations. It's been Cooper on that quick run up the middle. Yeah, you soften, soften the defense a little bit, get the linebackers to soften up. Offensive line just has to get a quick helmet on the defensive lineman to give Cooper a little seam. And with that first down run, Cooper will go over 100, 103 yards, and we still have 445 left in the first half. The fake to Cooper. The long pass for Chapman. It is caught. That was a great catch. At the 13-yard line, a 26-yard gain on a beautiful catch by Antonio Chapman. Chapman did a nice job just looking the ball right into his hands and catching the football. Brandon Godsey, probably the strongest of the cornerbacks for Miami makes the tackle. Not much he could do on that play, yeah. just a great pass and catch the as Chapman yeah, the, hauled it in. The coverage is definitely there. 
What's nice is you get the fake to Cooper, which does freeze the linebacker, so it does leave Godsey kind of on an island out there all by himself. Chapman with his second catch of the day. Cooper up the middle. Hammond combining <laughs> with Godsey to make the tackle. Cooper with a burst of energy up the middle, and he's inside the five-yard line. I'm going to tell you what, Cooper's jacked up Hammond pretty good a few times now. Puts his head down right before the blow and delivers a lick. Tell you what, coaches love to see running backs who get their pads down oh, low. Yeah, it's and so that's critical. exactly what Cooper did right there. Well, when you do, you get, a, you get three extra yards. Falling down, you'll get three extra yards. Second and one from the four-yard line. Cincinnati down by nine. It's the fullback, Garden. He has a first down as he gets to the three-yard line. Nick Monk makes the tackle and that's noteworthy because Nick Monk plays almost every play on offense as the H-back, something of a hybrid between a fullback and a tight end. He also plays middle linebacker in running downs and comes up to make the tackle on guard. Monk's a good solid player, obviously very versatile. Based upon the way he looks, he's probably a pretty spirited guy. He's got the big guns, he's tattooed, he's probably a strong player, probably real vocal, plays a lot of different positions, probably has a lot of respect on that team. Offensive coordinator Greg Seaman refers to him as a modern day Chuck Bednarik. Oh yeah. Hard-nosed two-way player, and he actually stopped Garden short of the first down by less than a yard. So it's going to be third down, several inches to go as Cincinnati tries to cut into this nine-point Red Hawk lead, 3-24 left in the first half. I have a feeling we may see Cooper again. But it may go Garden to the right side. It is Garden. He's slowed at the line of scrimmage. Then he gets the forward lean going. Potter got to him first. He might have to have another measurement. Yeah. The ref may ask for the change to be brought out. If it's questionable, you know, you, you always want to measure. Just helps give your uh, players an extra breath. Right now, offensive line, when the change come out, they just start sucking air. That's close. Here's the measurement, and by the nose of the football, Cincinnati has first and goal at the three-yard line. I'll tell you, that was a big play for Cincinnati right there. That was a big play. Does Minter with a very questionable whether to go for it on that play if it was fourth down, or do you go for the sure three points because it's early in the game? I'll tell you what, considering how bad the kicking's been this year, I bet they would have gone for it. Probably so, probably so. Three tight ends. I checked that, two tight ends, one wide receiver, and the back's in the eye. It is guarded, the fullback. Big push. Stops short of the goal line, but he gets down to the one. Garden had two touchdowns on that play last week against Southern Miss. Again, a quick dive play right up the middle. Hammond does a nice job just facing him up, keeping his feet driving and getting the momentum to swing to the other side. And Hammond the round and of company. applause you hear in the background is for the announcement that Dustin Cohen has just made his 400th career tackle. That's great. Garden again, touchdown Bearcats. Good. They kept going to the well. And Lloyd Garden crosses the goal line. It's a two-point Miami lead, assuming Cincinnati is able to tack on the extra point. Got a good football game going on right here. Nice balance. It's good to see Minner spread around a little bit. Cooper's gotten the ball so much. Let's keep a little off balance, get Garden the ball a little bit. Up the middle, let him get some points on the board for you. And the kick is good. So freshman kicker Jonathan Ruffin is three for three today. 2-14 left in the first half. And it's Miami by two, 23-21. Again, Big Lloyd right over the middle just lunges for the first down. Offensive line did a good job just getting low off the ball so nobody could jump up over the pile. 
and give me the offensive lineman mindset. Cincinnati didn't try anything tricky inside the 10. They just kept pounding away up the middle, trusting that the offensive lineman could get a push. Well, it all goes back to what happened in the first and earlier on in the second quarter. They established the running game with Cooper. What happens is the offensive linemen believe they can run the ball. Their confidence level's high. And when you're down in pay dirt, nothing feeds an offensive lineman, as far as their intensity level goes, than say, run the ball, run the ball. Eight plays, 49 yards, culminating in the one-yard touchdown run by Lloyd Garden. And let's go down to our man on the sidelines, Andy Trine. Guys, and listening to the Bearcat coaching staff behind UC's bench, they think UC's offensive line is bigger and stronger than Miami's defensive line, so don't be surprised if the Bearcats continue to pound the ball up the middle. Cincinnati has rushed for 114 yards in the first half, passed for 72 more. During a four-game losing streak, UC quarterback Deontay Kenner has averaged 311 passing yards. He hasn't passed that effectively so far in this ball game, but the run has worked well. And this time, Jonathan Ruffin eschews the high short kick and boots it out of the end zone. That was a nice kick. Got a lot of leg behind that one. Cincinnati special teams in general has done a pretty good job this year, kicking the football, getting down, making good coverage, uh, good coverage, not allowing the big play. Last year they had some problems there and gave up several big plays on special teams, so they're starting to tighten that up some. New special teams coach this year, Amos Jones, who played on a college football national championship team under Bear Bryant at Alabama back in 1978. You'll never know the temperature by looking at Rick Minter during a ball game. <laughs> and penalty flags as Mike Bath dropped back to pass. Coach Minter always in the black long sleeve top, the black pants, whether it's 20 degrees or 80 degrees. I'd go to two a day camp and it'd be 90, 95 degrees, and he would still have that jacket on. I'd say, Coach Minter, what are you doing with the jack? And I was like, hey, I'm trying to shed some pounds. I'm on the road a lot. All I do is eat. <laughs> the fans, on the other hand, taking advantage of the warmth and the sunshine. A chance to catch some rays while catching a great battle for the bell. Miami up by two, 23-21, with 2.07 left in the first half. That penalty was offsides against Miami. So it's first and 15. Bath's pass is incomplete. No, I beg your pardon. Caught on the deflection by Mike Sullivan. How about that? Sullivan has a diving catch and a catch of a deflection in this game. Good heads up football right here. Sullivan has kept his eyes open, was able to look it in. A nine yard gain for the Red Hawks. Second down and six, 144 left in the half. That is Buxton. Ty Buxton catches the first down completion. That'll momentarily stop the clock with 139 left in the half. Right now you're kind of getting that prevent defense starting to soften up a little bit. The bath out of the shotgun. Throwing long for Gaylor. He leaps and it's incomplete as Tinker Keck got a hand in there and batted the ball away. Nice play by Keck. He timed it up perfectly. He got his hand right up on the football. Trevor Gaylor has three catches for 76 yards. And the Miami coaches think that he'll be in an NFL training camp before next season. They're not sure if he'll be drafted or not, but they are certain that if he isn't drafted, he'll be picked up as a free agent by somebody. Has great size at 6'4", good leaping ability. He's such a large yeah. average speed. Having such a large target really helps out the quarterback. Just kind of find the guy when he's out there trying to run his routes and get open. Second down and ten. And that'll be underthrown. Mario Mons putting some heat on the quarterback. Along with Ben Peening. Stegman was the intended receiver. It's going to be third down and ten with 124 left in the half. For the most part, Bath has had a lot of time. A lot of good time. What you can see now is Keith Willis is going to keep telling the defensive lineman, get pressure on Bath, get pressure on him. It's the only way we're going to be able to slow him down. Third down and 10. 
A lot of Path time. Throwing long. Sexton. And it is caught out of bounds by the Bearcats. No interception. Sexton was the intended receiver and the free safety. Dewan Gossett covered a lot of ground to get in the way of that pass. Good hustle by Gossett to get over there. Cincinnati still has three timeouts left, so the Bearcats will get the football with a chance. 117 left in the half. Another short kick by McCullough. It goes out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Cincinnati will have it at the 39 with three timeouts left and a minute 12 to work with. Just a 29-yard kick by McCullough. Came into the game with good stats and has punted very poorly so far today. You see can really open up the offense now and go with four, two, five wide receiver sets. Four or five people out on the wide and just spread it all out and create a lot of passing lanes for Deontay Kenner. You got Cooper in the backfield again. We go with four receivers. And when you get a situation like this, Dan, Cooper is going to be utilized probably more so as a receiver, an extra blocker than anything else. 112 left in the half. Kenner over the middle, caught by Tony Smichael at the 48 yard line of Miami. That's a first down for Cincinnati, stopping the clock with 103 left in the half. Vercellis Hammond with a tackle. They're going to take their time, keep their poise. They've got three timeouts remaining. Don't make any foolish mistakes, you've got time. Assistant head coach Joe Daniels signals in the play to Deontay Kenner. Straight drop, gets rid of it quickly. It is caught by Ty Keith. Keith has another first down. He can't get to the sideline before being tackled by Bob Petrovic, but the clock stops in college football for the first down. Keep moving those chains and keep stopping the clock. You don't have to burn your timeouts. When they start to get into the in, the red zone, the 20 yard line in, they'll be able to utilize those timeouts, put together a nice game plan based upon the defense they're looking at. 44 seconds left. Young Ty Keith, a redshirt freshman out of Georgia, a player with a lot of potential, who suffered an injury on his first catch all season in that Kent game that we televised to begin the year, and hasn't been the same since. Now it's tough. When you get one of those injuries early on, you kind of lose your confidence and you lose your, your momentum. And it's one of those lingering little injuries that continue to kind of plague you throughout the year. Just enough to throw off your concentration. What you're seeing right now, UC's offense completing some nice balls. Miami's in a zone defense, and UC's kind of attacking the zone where one player's responsibility switches over to another player's responsibility. In that split second, there's a little opportunity where a player may not be covered. And that's what Deontay Kenner's finding and throwing to. Cincinnati using one of its three timeouts with 44 seconds to go. Kenner with time, and it is incomplete. Van trying for the one-handed catch. That play took four seconds. Kenner typically gets rid of it within two seconds, making him almost impossible to sack. He's only been sacked three times this season. Nice defensive play by Mike Yeager. It'll be third down and 10. That was a quick three-step drop, but he had a lot of time. You'd like to see him, see if he can get somebody else open out there on the perimeter. coverage. Third down and 10 with 36 seconds left in the half. Cincinnati is not within field goal range. The pass is complete to Cooper. He dives for the first down marker and gets an unbelievable spot, a very generous spot, and the fans here at Jaeger Stadium <laughs> boo loudly. Coop, good hands. 
good nose for where he has to go. They were a little generous there. Very seldom do you get those type calls in Jaeger Stadium. We'll have a measurement to see if it's a first down with 31 seconds to go. Well, apparently we won't. It is a first down. I don't think Rick Minner's gonna argue with that. So they move the chains. Time stands still until they are moved. Kenner with time. Caught by the tight end Ashley Hunt at the five yard line. The clock stops with 26 seconds left in the half and now Cincinnati uses one of its timeouts. The Cats still have one. They have the ball first and goal at the five yard line. That was a great, great play. Nice call. Use the tight end. We haven't seen Ashley Hunt all day. He gets open in the middle, they get the ball to him. Ashley Hunt has always been a good receiver. Earlier on in his career, he had a hard time putting weight on, so he's a, he had a difficult time blocking real well, but could always catch the ball. And in this new offensive system under Jimbo Fisher, they like to use that tight end as more of a receiver type role rather than a blocker. And I think Ashley Hunt likes playing on Fox 19. He had a big game against Kent to he begin sure the season. A couple of touchdown grabs in that game. And he has set Cincinnati up in great position with 26 seconds left in the half. He's a good kid. He's been a little unhealthy through the season with a bad shoulder that's kind of dinged up. And the shoulder's injuries for a tight end really become difficult because anything they try to do to add stability to the shoulder, it's going to limit your range of motion. So it's difficult to get your hands up and catch the ball. So it's really tough. Cincinnati will go to the shotgun at the five yard line. Tough to run it with only 26 seconds left in the half. Kenner under pressure. Still alive with the football. Deontay runs, still running. He'll be stopped after a time-consuming one-yard gain. This clock stops with 13 seconds left in the half. Cincinnati will probably use its final timeout. Well, he almost got grabbed right there. I think the offensive line thought that the ball was probably gone. Brian McCullough and Andrea Rockery finally make the tackle. Well, Mitchell would rather see Deontay do that than try to force a poor ball and cause an interception. And now a very tricky situation for Cincinnati here. Second down and goal from just outside the two with 13 seconds left and no timeouts left. If you run the football and don't make it, you don't score. Right. If you pass, and it's incomplete, you would have more than one chance, but a field goal would give Cincinnati a one-point lead. So pass, throw it once, try for the touchdown, and if you don't get it, kick it. That's what I think he's gonna do. And Deontay Kenner has to realize if he's in any uh, threat of being sacked, he has to get rid of the football. Watch for the wide side of the field, or to Cooper to kind of break off into the end zone right by the eye of Miami for the play. Kenner throws and it is tipped. 10 seconds left. Dustin Cohen making a big play as he often does. Cincinnati could do the same thing or elect to go for the field goal. They're going to Cooper right out of the backfield. They're trying to get Cooper open there. Third and goal from the two. Tell you what, he wasn't really open. No, Cincinnati he might have been fortunate that Dustin Cohen batted down that yeah. ball. Cohen did a good job. Jump up, great instinct. Jump up and knock it down. Ten seconds, it's got to be a quick release. The blitz comes, the pass caught by Tony Smichel for the touchdown. Miami, with a risky strategy from the two, came with a blitz. Tony Smichael snuck into the end zone wide open. Deontay Kenner read it, hit him, and Cincinnati has the lead. That was a smart, gutsy play. That was a very gutsy play. On Miami's end, 
Defensively, a little gamble. UC was able to capitalize. So Michael was all by himself. Jonathan Ruffin with a low kick, but it is good. So Cincinnati has scored four touchdowns in the first half and will go to the locker room, we assume, with a 28-23 lead, although there are seven seconds left in the half. UC's played poorly in the first half many games this year. Today they started off disastrous, but they've been able to regain their poise. They put together a pretty good string so far. What they got to do, though, is come out in the third quarter, Dan, and be consistent. Speaking of maintaining poise, injured Miami linebacker Mike Montgomery is helping us out in the broadcasting booth today, and although his team just fell behind by five points, he didn't throw anything. You'll fit in well on press row someday. <laughs> keeping his poise, keeping his poise. We give right, uh, Mike rather the right to go bananas if Miami pulls out the ball game late. Until then, he has to maintain his poise. <laughs> He's giving me those little looks, though, when Miami does score, those little jabs. I'm glad I'm standing in between you guys. <laughs> like I'm going to be able to stop a fight at 175 pounds. You got nine plays, 61 yards. Again, you get a 9, 10, 11 play drive. Generally, you're going to come up with some points on the scoreboard. You see, again, did just that. So Jonathan Ruffin will kick it off with seven seconds left in the half. Could see a line drive down the middle here. That is what we see. Smart. Caught by McCullough at the 15. And the clock is stopped with two seconds left. If Miami wants to try for it, there is time for a Hail Mary. There is Tony Smichael who caught the touchdown. There is head coach Terry Hepner. Hepner has fit in real well. He's been here for a long time as it is, so he's able to step right in and not change a whole lot. When you got a team that comes off a 10-1 season with the success that Miami has had in the tradition, it's nice to have a coach come in that's not going to rock the boat too much. And Miami will just down the football to end the first half. A tremendous first half of football filled with big plays for both teams. 51 points on the scoreboard between Cincinnati and Miami, and the Bearcats head to the locker room with a five-point lead. Robert Cooper rushing for 112 yards in the first half. Travis Prentice held to 48, although he does have one of the three touchdowns he needs to tie an NCAA record. Let's head down to Andy Trinan. Rick, the battle for the bell, another typical backyard brawl. What's your assessment of the first half? Well, I, you know, a typical backyard brawl, you know. Fans are having a great time. It's causing great heartache for coaches on both sides of the sideline. But uh, I'm proud of the way our kids are battled out and hung in there. In the first quarter, you turned the ball over four times, but your defense held them to only nine points off of those turnovers. That well, had to be key. That's what allows us to still be in the ball game. So our hats off to Rick and the boys over on defense. Offense did a nice job just kind of keeping their composure. Looked out of sync early, now we're getting back in the groove. But mine is a good football team. We got a war cut out for us here in the second half. Okay, Rick, good luck to you in the second half. Dan, back to you in the studio. We hope you're enjoying the game so far in a seat at home. You'll be on the edge of that seat in the second half. Our halftime score, Cincinnati 28, Miami 23. Half time at Jaeger Stadium in Oxford. What a half it's been. Cincinnati leads Miami by five in the 104th battle for the victory bell. Dan Horton, John Arena back at Jaeger Stadium. If you had told the Bearcats before this game they would have four turnovers in the first half and lead, there's not a single person that would have bought it. 
Oh, no. Defensively, UC has kept them in this football game. They've kept their poise. The leadership on their defense was able to get them together. The coaching staff did a good job keeping the game plan sound. The defensive line was able to make some plays, keep them in this football game. Offensively, again, they got the passing game going real slowly. They started running the ball with Cooper, who's had a great first half. And they were able to put together some good, consistent drives and put some points on the board. And they have done against Travis Prentice about all you can hope to do. He's on a pace to get close to 100 yards, but he has not run away with this game. Right. He's such a solid player, and he's one play away from breaking a big play. But they have done a good job containing him. Mike Bath going to uh, their wide receiver, Gaylor, who's done a really nice job opening up the passing game, which makes it difficult to stop Prentice, because once you start to open up that passing game, all of a sudden, the running game starts to become exposed. Deontay Kenner got off to a slow start. He's playing well now and we'll meet Deontay Kenner when our halftime festivities continue. At the half here in Oxford, Cincinnati leads Miami 28-23. Welcome back to Jaeger Stadium. There is the halftime score. Cincinnati 28, Miami 23. The Bearcats taking that lead on a touchdown pass thrown by Deontay Kenner with seven seconds left in the first half. And at this time, we'd like to take a closer look at the junior quarterback from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. In Rick Minner's first five years at UC, the Bearcats were primarily a run-oriented team. But this year, they've spread out defenses, frequently lined up with three or four wide receivers, and aired it out, showcasing the talents of junior quarterback Deontay Kenner. It makes me feel that I'm um, real happy that these, that these coaches have all this confidence in me to hand the team over to me, if that's what you want to say. Personally, I believe he's our best offensive player, and that's what you want to do in any game, you know, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, you want to let your offense rely on your best player, and I think that's what it's allowing us to do. Kenner set school records for passes and completions against Southern Miss. He was 35 for 59 for 407 yards. He also passed for 343 yards against Ohio State. But Deontay doesn't seem overly excited about climbing the all-time passing charts at UC. They're just numbers to me, you know. I'd rather be in a different column than the ones I'm in. I'd rather be in a win column if you want to keep stats. That's the stat I'd rather keep. But he should be proud of the numbers he's posting, considering that Kenner is still learning the offense, installed by new coordinator Jimbo Fisher. It's a quarterback-oriented system. We run the ball with our backs and receivers, but the quarterback's putting us in the right plays all the time. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot of study time, a lot of film time, and, uh, you know, Deontay's willing to do that. He has a very good understanding of football, not just, you know, he's a smart young man, but some guys are smart, but they don't have football smarts. He has all that, and uh, you know, he's doing a great job of getting us in the right place. And if and when he doesn't, he hears about it from Fisher, who rides him unmercifully at practice. You read the backside. I have a different style, and uh, I, I want practice to be the pressure. I want the game to be easy. It's nice to know that um, that that's the way, that's his intentions, because I know when you're out there on the field, you don't always know his intentions. But um, I, I feel that he pressures me good enough, you know what I'm saying? The game is a lot easier than practice, I'll tell you that. Naturally, Deontay hopes to play in the NFL, but he's equally focused on getting a degree in exercise physiology. It's very important to me, my mom, my family. Um, I think I think a degree in my in my profession will will set me up for life and something I want to do something I'm into right now. Um, I think I take every class serious, no matter what it is, no matter what I do in it, because I feel that every class I take, I'm a need. If I if I don't feel that a class offers me what I need, I don't take it. So I'm here to get the experience of the classes and just something I can take out to life with. Deontay Kenner with 130 yards passing in the first half, including the late touchdown that gave Cincinnati its five-point lead. When halftime continues here at Jaeger Stadium, Andy Trinan will visit with a player who had one of the most dramatic highlights in the history of this series. Our halftime score, Cincinnati 28, Miami 23. 
Welcome back to Yeager Stadium, where the UC Bearcats lead the Miami Redhawks 28 to 23 at the half. And I'm joined now by a man who has starred in this series in the past, a man who ran the ball for Miami before Travis Prentice, Ty King. Ty, thank you for joining us. And tell me a little bit about this rivalry. How important is this for the players? Well, I think, you know, it's it's one thing to play college football. You know, you can get excited about that. But then we have a situation like Miami UC, where 35 miles apart, similar, you know, type of school. It's just an extra oomph that you need every weekend to come out and you know, get ready for the game. Now, i got to ask you about the play. The year was 1995. It was 17 to 17. There were 16 seconds left in the game. Take us through the play. Well, originally I'm thinking we got the hands team out there, and I'm like, okay, we're going to tie again because we had tied the year previous. And they kicked it deep, and my first focus was just catch the ball. And by the time I caught the ball, it was kind of so quick, I looked up and I was on my way to the end zone. And the rest is history. The rest is history. Miami won that game 23-7. to you were an upperclassman when Travis Prentice was an underclassman. Tell, tell us about him as a freshman. Was he a star in the making? Did you think that when you first met him? When, when I hosted him on his visit here. I thought he was a nice kid. Um, once he came into camp, you know, after the first couple of drills or so, I was kind of, I had my doubts because he wasn't, you know, obviously the Travis he is now. But as I practiced with them and, you know, got to know him better, we could all realize that he was going to be pretty special. What about today's ball game? Miami had some big opportunities early, and they only got nine points off of the four turnovers. That seems to be the key in the game. Typical Miami UC series, no matter what goes on in the game, it's going to be close. I wish I had answers to why, but it's just the, the nature of the series. Uh, you would think in a normal situation, four to one turnover ratio, score be a little different, but it's Miami UC. All right, why don't you tell the Miami Red Hawk fans out there what Ty King is doing now, a successful Miami alum? Well, I'm right now working in Columbus for Discover Card. I'm part of the management team there um, in the Merchant Operations Center, uh, working with uh, my unit, teaching and coaching them as to how to manage accounts uh, for our merchants. All right, it's prediction time. Players always shy away from this. UC leading 28 to 23 at halftime. What's going to happen in the second half? Well, we're going to make some adjustments, um, obviously, on the defensive end because they're running back, you know, having a good day right now. Uh, we'll make the necessary adjustments, I think, and come out and play some Miami football and pull the victory out. All right, Ty King, thank you very much for joining us. It is 28 to 28-23, UC leading the Miami Redhawks at halftime. Dan Horton, John Arena will be back with more right after this. Halftime on a beautiful fall day in Oxford. The UC Bearcats lead the Miami Red Hawks 28-23. Miami will get the football to begin the second half. And John Arena, I would have to think in the Miami locker room right now, they're thinking they blew a golden opportunity to build a huge lead, not taking advantage of the four first quarter turnovers. Well, they really did. I mean, if you look at what they did coming out in the first quarter of this game, they made some major things happen. They were not able to capitalize on those things. UC's defense should get a lot of credit because they were able to hold Miami to just three points in several situations. It allowed them to get some life back into the team. Whenever you play, you heard Ty Keith at halftime, whenever it's a big rivalry game, the momentum's going to shift back and forth, kind of like a big pendulum. And as the momentum continues to shift back and forth, both teams right now are producing pretty well. But Miami could not get on top and put UC away when they had them against the ropes. Cincinnati has made a habit of coming from behind. Unlike last week when they were down by three touchdowns at the half, the comeback came much earlier this time, and they have the five-point lead. Right. The Bearcats all week long talked about playing strong in the first half. They can do well in the second half, but what happens is if you get behind the eight ball too long, you don't have enough time to get back into the football game. At least today, the defense kept them in the game. Offensively, they started to come alive, especially in that second quarter. And now in the second half, if they keep playing a nice balanced attack and do a good job on defense, they're going to put themselves in a position to win the football game. On to the highlights and career touchdown number 73 for Travis Prentice. Again, you see Travis Prentice right up the middle. This is Miami's bread and butter play. When you're in short yardage, give it to Prentice, and he's going to score. He's been good. Robert Cooper's been even better for UC. Cooper's done a nice job hitting the big plays. Right up the middle again, follows his offensive lineman. As the blocks develop, he does a great job 
sensing where the hole is and getting it up the field for the touchdown. That was a 12-yard run earlier. He went 29 for a touchdown. Mike Bath has been able to hit Trevor Gaylor for some big plays in this game. Bath has such a great presence in the pocket. He just stands up nice and tall, fires the ball away. And Gaylor right now is licking his chops for a big day, and he's having a nice day. He was wide open there, but Tony Smichael was wide open with seven seconds left in the half, and that's why Cincinnati leads. Good play by Rick Minner. It was a mismatch. Michael was not even covered. He went right into the end zone, caught a nice pass for a touchdown. And as we take a look at first half stats. When you look at the stats rushing-wise, Cincinnati, again, very heavy, which is good to see. Cooper's having a good day. Passing overall, it's fairly balanced. Overall, in general, the first half statistics are pretty uh, are pretty competitive, pretty right on as far as both teams producing fairly well. The key is going to be the second half, and again, which team is going to be able to get the momentum to swing their way? Those first half stats brought to you by iWireless. Let's take a, a, another look at Robert Cooper, talk about him at least. 112 yards rushing in the first half. He's a tough guy, and he's uh, made some tough runs in this game. Well, Cooper's one of those players where if you give him the ball a lot, he's going to continue to do good things for you. He's a strong runner, and when he gets hit, he continues to fall forward. He has the potential for breaking the big play, as we can see here, and getting a nice touchdown. But the key with Cooper is... No matter what situation you throw that guy in, he's going to continue to fight and scratch and gets that extra yardage for you. 17 carries, 112 yards for Robert Cooper. 14 carries, 48 yards for Travis Prentice. Travis's long gain of this game, only 10 yards. He's averaging 3.4 per carry. The Bearcats have obviously keyed the defense towards stopping Travis Prentice and have done a wonderful job of that so far today. The quarterback comparison favors Mike Bath. He's passed for 157 compared to 130 for Kenner. Each quarterback with one touchdown. Deontay with two INTs, Mike Bath with one. Bath again has a nice weapon with Trevor Gaylor, and he's going to continue to exploit that. What UC could not soften up on is the fact that Travis Prentice at any time has the speed to break the big play right up the middle. So what that's going to do is probably keep the defensive uh, linebackers frozen inside to stop the running game. And it's going to allow Gaylor and Bath again to hook up for the big play downfield. As you look at the Bearcats, you'll notice there are no names on the back of their uniforms this year. Rick Minter wanted to do that to emphasize that no individual is bigger than the team. Hey, you see a lot of teams now in college football do that. And... Uh, you wonder how much it really works. It, it, it philosophy, it's, it's a good philosophy, though. Hey, there's no I in team. We're all a team. And uh, he did kind of interestingly enough, though, say you'll get your names back on a jersey if we get a postseason bid to a bowl. So then when everybody's watching on television, they know who you are. And the no names on the jersey has certainly worked well for Bob Knight at Indiana over the years. Yeah, it really has. Jaeger Stadium, the setting for the 104th battle for the victory bell. The temperature in the 70s, the sun beating down on the natural grass playing surface. Just a gorgeous late October day for football. It's a beautiful place to play. I mean, as, a, as an ex-player, I love playing on this in the stadium because it is somewhat of a hostile environment, especially when you have a rivalry like this. And then even as a spectator, it's a fun atmosphere just to watch college football. You've got the leaves changing, and, uh, you know, it's a beautiful day parking lot everyone's tailgating out there before the game it's just a great atmosphere overall Miami had a record setting crowd at home earlier this year when Marshall came to town Marshall of course won that ball game the thundering herd ranked 13th in the country and right now Miami really has to be rooting for Marshall to try and pop up into the top eight of the national rankings more on that in just a bit this is Steve Little from the goal line and he goes head over heels to the 20 yard line the champion of the MAC conference gets the automatic bowl bid to the Motor City Bowl. If Marshall were to rank high enough up into the top eight to get a BCS bowl bid, right. that could open the door for Miami to play in that Motor City Bowl. But it's going to be very tough for Marshall because of the strength of schedule. That hurts them in the BCS rankings, and their schedule doesn't get any tougher from here on in. Right, that is going to hurt Marshall, but Marshall is a complete football team. I think they can play with anybody in the country if they were given the opportunity. I agree. On the first play from scrimmage in the second half, it's a handoff to Travis Prentice, and he stopped after a gain of about a yard. This is where the Bearcats start to come to life in that second half. Now, they played well. Uh, in parts of the first half. Let's hope that this time they can put together a nice solid performance. Mario Mons with the tackle. 
baseball fans will recognize his brother, wonderful, terrific Mons III. Mario's great-great-grandfather had 13 children. The first 12 were <laughs> girls. When he finally had a boy, he named him Wonderful Terrific. He was so happy to have a son. Here's a bomb for Buxton. Great coverage by the Bearcats. Jeff Burrow stride for stride with Buxton, and the pass is incomplete. Burrow's almost picked that ball off. Again, if they can get Bath, if they start to get more pressure on Bath in the backfield, they're going to force him into a situation where he may make a mistake. Good coverage. I mentioned that baseball fans would recognize wonderful, terrific Mons because he was a minor leaguer in the Reds organization last year. Ah. Third down and nine coming up. Nate Sexton out of LaSalle goes in motion. Bath looks to throw and finds Sexton for the first down and more. A huge game for Nate Sexton. Dewan Gossett can't catch him. It is a 78-yard touchdown for Nate Sexton. Nate Sexton earned the nickname Stealth from his teammates because he doesn't have great speed, but he makes big plays. Somehow he sneakily is able to do it. That's his biggest play ever. 78 yards for the touchdown for senior Nate Sexton out of LaSalle. Well, that was an exciting football play. He found the open seam. Caught the ball and he saw the goal line. He wasn't going to stop until he got there. Brumbergs tacks on the extra point. And on a short pass on third and nine, Nate Sexton goes 78 yards. And Miami is back in front. One minute into the third quarter, it's Miami 30, UC 28. Miami up by a deuce with 14.01 left in the third. Nate Sexton, brother of Colorado Rockies ball player, Chris Sexton, who is a great hitter at Miami with a 78 yard touchdown. Just a nice slant play, really close to the line of scrimmage. Sexton had a little difficulty bringing it in, but once he got his hands on it, he was gone. Mentioned that his teammates have given him the nickname Stealth. Here's a guy who doesn't have blazing speed, and yet he came into this game averaging 20 yards per catch. That average just got better after a 78 yard connection. That was a really nice play, especially his senior year. Big rivalry like that. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio, LaSalle High School. That's a really nice way to start off the second half for Miami. We've had five lead changes in this game. Miami getting set to kick it off. McCullough boots it up the middle. Chapman takes it at the 10. Antonio Chapman with huge room up the middle. Still running as he gets to the 38 yard line. Milt Bowen making the special teams tackle. Boy, there was a huge gap up the middle there. Oh, there really was. Again, you talk about momentum switching back and forth. Miami has the momentum, and then all of a sudden on special teams, you can breathe a little bit of life, a little back hope, a little hope back into the team. Chapman does a good job just keeping his feet moving, trying to get upfield. So a good drive start for the Bearcats. They begin at their own 39-yard line after that return by Antonio Chapman. I backfield behind Kenner, who looks to throw on first down. And miscommunication between Ladaris Van and Deontay Kenner. And now there's a penalty flag. The Red Hawks might have been holding Van, which would explain why he was nowhere near that pass. Yeah, there was something there that uh, wasn't right. Yeah, you start with this type of field position. It's so nice offensively. You run out to the field, and you realize that in just 10 yards, you can be over the 50-yard line and going back in towards Pater to score. It's a whole lot different being on the 40 compared to being on the 20. And you know you got 80 yards in front of you. Deontay Kenner climbing the all time passing charts at UC up to 4105 career yards that is fifth all time and at the pace he is going on this year he would come very close to breaking Denny McCoyne's all time yardage record. Yeah he's playing well I had a great opportunity to play with Danny McCoyne and Lance Harp two individuals on that list were both very solid quarterbacks automatic first down on that penalty. And Robert Cooper 
Busts up the middle for a couple of yards. Andy Arakri out of Kettering, Ohio, makes the tackle. Probably one of the best things for uh, Deontay Kenner was having Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator who was at Auburn last year, his style of, of coaching is very different. He's more of an in-your-face type coordinator who really puts a lot of pressure on Deontay in practice. What happens, though, is when you get underneath that type of pressure in practice, you're more likely to be poised in the game. And that's what we've seen this year. That's exactly what Jimbo Fisher says his motivation is when he yells at Deontay Kenner in practice. Cooper gains a first down as he gets to the 36, but there is a penalty flag on the play. This one might be coming back. Looks like it may be a little holding. It is, and that one will come back. It's nothing worse for an offensive line to get a holding penalty after a big run. It's one of those plays over. They could call it on almost every play. It depends upon when they throw the flag, really. That's all right. When he runs off to the sidelines at the uh, next change of possession, he'll just avoid Minner and Zerline. Kind of hide on the other end of the bench. The holding penalty occurred a few yards ahead of the line of scrimmage, so when they move it back 10 yards from that spot, the result is an eight-yard loss. Sets up second down and 15 from the 44. Miami up by two, 30 to 28. Kenner with time, and it is caught for a first down at the 39-yard line of Miami. Antonio Chapman with a catch, Brandon Godsey with a tackle, and a penalty flag after the hit. Chapman's really starting to come into his own. If we recall back to the Kent game, he was only really active on the squad for a week, and he still got in the game, was able to contribute. Face mask penalty as Godsey Brought down Chapman with a mask. As you can see now, he's becoming a real force in their wide receiving core. Chapman has stepped up in the last two weeks due to an injury to UC's leading receiver this season, junior Jason Collins Baker, who is out with an injured Achilles tendon. He could be back next week. Robert Cooper on first and ten. Nada. Dustin Cohen and Andy Arakri make the hit. You talk about Achilles tendon, tendon injuries, and it, I never really heard much about that in the 80s when I played ball and into the early 90s, and it seems like within the last five to 10 years, as soon as Marino ruptured his Achilles, and then you have Vinny Testaverde in the NFL, you got more college athletes doing it. Um, you wonder, it's like sometimes these weird injuries kind of happen in phases. I'd never heard of Achilles ankle injuries up until recently. Speaking of Jason Collins Baker, who is out with that Achilles injury, would like to congratulate Jason and his wife, Tasha, who celebrate their one year wedding anniversary tomorrow. Baker to Cooper, touchdown, 33 yards as Cincinnati pulls right back in front on a beautifully thrown ball by Deontay Kenner. Kenner did a great job just putting the ball softly right into Cooper's chest on the run. But we said earlier that Cooper does a good job catching the ball in the backfield. Very similar to Travis Prentice there. And he showed the skills on that drive. Cincinnati back up by four, trying to make it five. And Jonathan Ruffin's kick is good. Ruffin five for five today on extra points. Deontay Kenner with his second TD pass of the game. And Cincinnati is pulled back in front. 11.44 left in the third quarter. 35-30. Dan Hoard, John Arena, and Andy Trinan back at Jaeger Stadium. Cincinnati back in front, thanks to this throw from Deontay Kenner to Robert Cooper. Look at a touch that Kenner puts on the ball. Softly just drops it right into Cooper's hands. They didn't have to break stride. Good protection by the offensive line. It allows Cooper, or Deontay Kenner to stand up, just toss it in there nicely. How about the day Cooper's having? 20 carries for 118 yards and two touchdowns, three catches, 47 yards, and that 33 yard score and that was Cooper having his left leg stretched by the head athletic trainer Bill Walker when you start to see productivity like that from one player you know that cramping can start to be an issue especially when it's in the mid 70s on a day that you don't expect it to be this warm taken by Steve Little at the goal line 
Gets away from a couple of tackles and has a wall of blockers in front. There's a penalty flag way back at the 14-yard line, so this one might be coming back. Ivan Fields and Freddie Smith in on that tackle for UC. Yeah, I'll tell you, this game is nonstop action. I mean, there's something going on all the time, whether it be special teams, offensively, defensively. You've seen a little bit of everything today. You know, holding penalty against Miami. You've even seen some holding penalties. Yes, we have. <laughs> there is the most recent scoring drive. Five plays, 61 yards. Officially a 32-yard touchdown pass from Kenner to Cooper. Got to get a few seeds in there. You got to stay on a good diet. It's a good protein balance. Are you sure those aren't Maylocks disguised as sunflower <laughs> seeds? It's been that kind of day for a defense-oriented head coach. I don't know. A good old boy, a good old boy from Arkansas, like uh, Mentor, he may he may eat sunflower seeds and they act as Maylocks in his system. There is Miami's offensive coordinator, truly one of the great guys in college football, Greg Seaman, who spent several years as the offensive coordinator at UC before moving to Miami to work for Terry Hepner this year. He's a classy guy before Certainly the game, is. you know, got to shake his hand and talk to him a little bit. And he's just such a friendly individual. You really hope a guy like that does well. Bath off play action going long for Gaylor and it is picked off by Dewan Gossett. Intercepted by Gossett at the 43 yard line. Miami going to the well perhaps once too often on the long pass to Gaylor and free safety Dewan Gossett picked it off. Boy that ball turned into it looked for a while there like Trevor Gaylor was open it turned into triple coverage in a hurry. The ball just hung up there so long it gave Gossett or uh, yeah Gossett a good time to react to get up there and pull it down. Second INT today for quarterback Mike Bath. Lost a little steam on the ball. See how he was open momentarily and by the time the ball got down there was three people around it. Cincinnati has never led by more than three. I checked that by more than the current five point spread. Robert Cooper carrying on first and ten gains a yard or two. Rockery is a really good, solid player. You look at the tackles that he's able to produce from a down lineman position. It's very impressive. You said he's double-digit tackles last week, 13, I believe. He's the kind of player that can make things happen. When you got a guy like that up front, it really frees up someone like Dustin Cohen to run free and make the big hits. One of Cincinnati's starting guards, Dwayne Johnston, just left the field with what appeared to be an injury. Robert Cooper gets inside the 40. Down to about the 37. It's going to be third and about three. Cohen and Arakri combine for another tackle. Again. There's Arakri right there. Good look at him. Pretty thick defensive lineman. I'm sure, he's probably pretty strong. Saw a quick glimpse of Joe Daniels, another great guy in college football. Some NFL experience as well. Cincinnati's assistant head coach. Kenner looking to run for the first down, and he will not get it. He stopped at the 35 and needed to get to the 33. Miami, Ryan Terry with a tackle. They played a draw very well all day long. They're not really uh, falling for that. They saw in film that that really chewed up some opponents this year that uh, fake draw in this year. I don't think they're going to let it happen. Fourth and two from the 35. It would be a 52 yard field goal. Forget about that. Cincinnati will go for it on fourth down and two. This is Rick Minner football right here. I have faith in my defense. They played well all day. I'm going to go for it. And if we don't get it, let them play defense. Cincinnati six of 12 on fourth down conversions this year. Cooper. Bounces outside and has the first down and more. He could go the distance. McCullough pushes him out of bounds inside the five yard line. They mark it at the three on fourth and two. Robert Cooper busted 32 yards. Great job by Coop, feeling the blocks, keeping his mind, keeping himself straight up so he can look around and find the outside seam. Boom, good adjustment right there. Nice cut, 
Takes it to the outside. That's just good heads up football. Generally, a guy's gonna put their head straight down and try to dive through the pile. But Cooper pulled up, made a great cut outside. First and goal from the three. With 9.16 left in the third quarter, Cincinnati up by five. Lloyd Garden tries to keep the legs driving, but he'll actually be pushed back for a loss. Brian McCullough flying up from the free safety position to make contact, and then a host of Red Hawks joined in. McCullough's been all over the field today. He really has. He's been involved in a lot of different plays. He's playing well. 13 tackles last year against UC, and I would guess that he'll be in double digits today. Yeah, I would think so, if not already. He's doing a really nice job. A senior from Hudson, Ohio, near Kent, Ohio. Originally a walk-on. Miami has a lot of players who originally walk-ons who play key roles. Andy Arakri is another. Cooper stopped at the line of scrimmage. Take no, I beg your pardon, it's Kenner. Well, they fooled me. I thought it was a handoff right up the gut to Robert Cooper, who was dropped at the five. Deontay Kenner went sprinting around the right side instead, and he comes up limping after that hit at the two-yard line. That was one of those plays where, you know, you sit back and it's kind of the armchair quarterback. You say, if you just tuck it up and run, you'll get in the end zone. But he's trying to look for that receiver to pop open at the last minute and throw a quick touchdown pass. Didn't fool the defense that much, but they got yours truly. Third and goal from the two. Well, last time, remember, they went to Smichael on that quick little pass play. They may go to Cooper again, kind of bleeding out to the left. Four receivers, one running back, Cooper. And it's Smichael again. There it is. Tony Smichael has been the target both times the Bearcats were looking at third and goal from inside the five. Cincinnati has opened up an 11 point lead. Dan, it's so hard to defend that when you've got four wide receivers spread out. You do the quick slant patterns. There's going to be a gap momentarily. If you get a good crisp throw, that is hard to defend. Six touchdowns for Cincinnati. And Jonathan Ruffin's kick is good. 8.27 left in the third quarter of a slugfest. The score, Cincinnati 42, Miami 30. In 103 previous meetings between Cincinnati and Miami, the most combined points ever scored, 83 back in 1986. We are at 72 and counting. That's a record that could very well fall today. Oh, this is just an action-packed game. You see here, it's Michael again with another touchdown. This game has been non-stop action-packed. Back and forth, special teams, offensively, defensively. It's a fun game to watch. Cincinnati 42, Miami 30. Ruffin kicks off. We haven't had a kickoff return for a touchdown yet. <laughs> McCullough up the middle. You never know. Still running. He gets to the 30. Cincinnati's most recent scoring drive, seven plays, 43 yards. Deontay Kenner with his third touchdown pass, a two-yarder to Tony Smichael, and we throw it to Andy Trinan. Guys, this game, our broadcast, may soon be a recruiting tape for both UC and Miami because if I'm a high school kid and I'm sitting at home right now, I want to play for one of those teams that's getting the ball up and down the field. Boy, both teams right are on. doing it, yep. Mike Bath looks to throw long on first down. Gaylor unable to make the sliding catch. He was open. He keeps looking for Gaylor in the middle. He wants Gaylor back in his game plan. If he continues to force it back, things can happen, just like you saw Gossett a little while back pick off the football. Mike Bath, 13 for 24. He's passed for 234 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. Cincinnati with two touchdowns in each of the first three quarters. The Bearcats have scored touchdowns on their last four possessions. Travis Prentice goes in motion. There's that backward pass to Prentice again. That's a fumble. That's a fumble. He picks it up. Prentice is running. Out, this is out. a live play. Bath looking to block for Prentice. 
Dewan Gossett makes the tackle. Good, good tackle by Gossett. And even though that was a pass, the ball was thrown backward, meaning it's a live ball when Prentice dropped it. Yeah, Seaman used to do a similar play with the Bearcats last year. You get three receivers on one side of the field. It's somewhat of a glorified screen play. Got everyone set. You get your receivers to block the defensive backs, and you take it up. Didn't work on this time. And I'll tell you what, even though Jeff Burrow, number eight, did not make the tackle, he did a nice job of stringing that play oh, out really toward did. the sideline. That's one of those busted plays that Prentice could turn into a huge gainer. Instead, it's a six-yard loss. Third and 16 as Bath drops back to pass. He's looking over the middle, now forced to run, and he is dropped for a sack by Dante Elliott. That's what they need to do, keep heat on Bath. Check that, Daryl Ransom makes the sack for Cincinnati. The freshman from Indianapolis. Keep younger heat brother, on Bath. Kansas City Chiefs defensive lineman, Daryl Ransom. He's going to be a good, solid player here at Cincinnati. He's continuing each week to get better and better. McCullough with a punt. Chapman, the return man for Cincinnati. Chapman has room to run, but Miami runs him down and makes the tackle at the 26-yard line. We should note that Chapman has been returning punts today and not Tinker Keck. Tinker, of course, was among the best in the country a couple of years ago, but this year, coming back from the knee injury, he has not been quite as explosive. He's only averaged about five yards per return, as opposed to the 15 yards he averaged two years ago. Yeah, let's look back here at, at the sack on Bath. Again, he had good time. This is a secondary sack. This is a covered sack where the defensive backs did not allow a receiver to pop open, so Bath had no choice but to eat the football. Good job by Ransom closing him down. Cincinnati starts at the 26-yard line. P.J. Mays in to play tailback, and P.J. does a nice job of keeping his feet moving for a four-yard gain. You know, Dan, we go back to Tinker Keck for a moment, and right now he's playing uh, cornerback just because of the injury problems that UC has had in their secondary. And if you have him returning punts, that is a high injury, quote unquote, high injury type position. So a couple things. Number one, he hasn't done the best job this year returning kicks, obviously. Uh, but secondly, I think they want to save him to make sure that they cannot afford to lose him in their secondary right now. If they lose Keck, they're going to be really in poor shape. Jacob Yavasil making that last tackle. This is Kenner on what looked like a busted play, picking up a first down. Yavasil again. Junior college player from California making the tackle for Miami. That was one of the few times we've seen Kenner really put together a nice little running play there without Miami snuffing it out. 5.38 left in the third quarter. Cincinnati up by a dozen. Bearcats have trailed by as many as nine and now lead by 12. P.J. Mays into Miami territory before Brandon Godsey slams him out of bounds. P.J. Mays coming off the bench with fresh legs, picking up right where Robert Cooper left off. That was a great block by Josh Gardner, number 67, the offensive tackle for Cincinnati. He stuck with his man out on an island. He allowed P.J. Mays to get around the corner. You can see it right here. He stuck with his man right there, which allowed P.J. to turn it upfield. Injuries opened a spot for him in the starting lineup yep. this year. And Josh Gardner, the freshman, another young man out of Bowler, has done a nice job. First and 10 from the 43. Kenner with a fake. Completes it to the tight end, Ashley Hunt. That's a first down as he gets inside the 30-yard line. Dustin Cohen and Vercellis Hammond make the tackle for Miami. Nice job by Ashley again. Again, it's kind of a revisit from the Kent game where Ashley had a big, big night. He's caught a couple big passes so far today. Two catches for Ashley Hunt. Both of them for first down yardage. That's Cincinnati looking to score a touchdown on its fifth consecutive possession. That's the way Jimbo Fisher works a tight end in. They kind of run silent for a while, and all of a sudden they pop a fairly large play. P.J. Mays bouncing outside, steps inside to get the first down as he gets to the 14-yard line. 
Cohen and Jaeger have to run him down to make the tackle. Good vision. You notice one thing about Cooper and P.J. Mays is they see the field very well. They don't just run with their heads down. They're able to adjust while they're running and bounce it to the outside to get additional yardage. That's kind of a special skill that you can't coach. Robert Cooper is finished for UC after this season. Here is the heir apparent, redshirt freshman P.J. Mays, who has played very well when given the opportunity this season. He really has. He is the only running back, three receivers in the game. It is P.J. Mays again going right. Another nice block by Gardner. Vercellis Hammond shoves him out of bounds at the five-yard line as Gardner is doing a great job on the right side of Cincinnati's offensive line. Hey, I'm going to tell you, for a true freshman that weighs 265 pounds, come right out of high school and block like he's blocking right now, you got to really give that kid a lot of respect. Look at that right there. Hands inside, good base, stays with his man. P.J. Mays able to take it around the corner. That's just good football. That's a freshman versus a freshman. Kurt Mester, the Frenchman, uh, freshman defensive lineman for Miami. And right now, at least, Josh Gardner is winning that battle. Second down and about a yard from the five-yard line. Kenner keeps. It's a touchdown for Cincinnati as Deontay Kenner takes it in from the four-yard line. Cincinnati with seven touchdowns in this ball game, and the Bearcats have taken an 18-point lead. I'm going to tell you what, if you would have told me five minutes into the first quarter that Cincinnati would be pulling away like they are right now, I wouldn't have believed it. And the PAT is good. It's a 19-point lead, 49 to 30. Well, I'll tell you, you talk about rivalries. Ladies and gentlemen, you're witnessing right now an all-out slugfest. And Miami's not going to be out of it yet. Design play, quarterback sneak. Takes to the left side, good job getting to the end zone. That's a gutsy call in a goal line situation. When you're three, four yards out, it's one thing. It's a lot different when you're, you know, when you're an inch or six inches out, that's a no-brainer. But in this situation, when you got to pick up some yardage, that's a gutsy call. Deontay Kenner has thrown two, uh, three touchdown passes. He now has the touchdown run to go with it. We still have four minutes and 39 seconds left <laughs> in the third quarter. Cincinnati with a new scoring high this year. The previous high was the previous game we televised on Fox 19, the 41-point effort against Kent. Seven plays, 74 yards. Only took a minute 50 seconds. P.J. Mays doing most of the work, yes. leaving Robert Cooper. The last several drives we've seen have been quick, quick hits. They're really getting yardage in big chunks right now, which is helping him get on the scoreboard very quickly. In this series, with 103 previous games, neither Cincinnati or Miami has ever scored 50 points. In fact, 49 for UC is a new record. Jonathan Ruffin's kick will be taken inside the five by McCullough. Gary Ruff wraps him up and brings him down. With a little help from Ivan Fields, Miami will start at the 33-yard line. Four hundred twenty wow. total yards for Cincinnati with a quarter and a half to go. Miami's offense hadn't been too bad either with 280. That's uh, either that means both offenses are doing extremely well or both defenses are playing rather poorly. <laughs> Not sure, but it's an exciting game nonetheless. Travis Prentice will run on first and 10 and he gets absolutely nothing. In fact, Mario Mons might have Knocked him down behind the line of scrimmage with some help from number 52, Eddie Johnson. Eddie Johnson, Mario Mons, a nice combination right in the middle. And two players who will be back next year. Yes, they are both exciting. juniors. Yeah, that was a good job by Eddie Johnson filling the hole and just making the tackle. He's a classy player, too. It's good to have him back for another year. He has a lot of maturity in that defense. Married man from Seattle, Yep, Eddie Johnson. Second down and 10. 
Bath to throw. If he can, and he can't, he will be sacked close to the line of scrimmage. Greg Lee was there. Mario Mons was there. So I'll have to divvy that sack up several ways. Yeah, you're slowly starting to see the uh, defensive line for the Bearcats get some more pressure on Bath, which is going to be critical to shut this offense down. Eddie Johnson was the one that forced him to spin. Then yep. Greg Lee hopped aboard. Isaac Thomas was there. Mario Mons, the tail end of the play. Third down and 11 coming up. He's going to try to go to Gaylor again, I'm sure. Yes, he does. It's caught, but he was out of bounds. Gaylor argues that he was pushed out. The officials disagree. And it appears that Miami will be forced to punt despite the pleas of Mike Bath. Miami loves to go to Gaylor when he's in the wide side of the field. Good attempt, not quite there. You see making a little break here. Looks like they may have pushed him out a little. But this is Miami, so generally you don't get those calls in your favor. That was close. So a three and out possession for Miami. Kent McCullough punts. Chapman catches it at the 34 yard line and slips and falls at the 40. So Cincinnati up by 19 with a chance to add to that lead considering how well the Bearcat offense has been performing. It's always very interesting to me how guys come and go from different uh, systems or schemes. You get a guy like Antonio Chapman who Last year was some junior college ball. This year comes in, he's become a really big part of the overall UC offense and special teams. He's doing a really nice job. There's always new players that are gonna come in and contribute every year. The Cats go back to Robert Cooper as the halfback. Cooper carries on the first down play and gains two yards to the 41. Lineman Josh Gardner helps straighten up his jersey. Both these teams, you know, as we move on towards this fourth quarter, conditioning and and all that's going to start to come into play because they've had a lot of activity today and they're going to start to get worn down. 2:15 left in the third, 49 to 30. Cooper. And he stumbles and falls after a one-yard gain at the 42. Bob Petrovic out of the great Cleveland St. Ignatius football program making the tackle. He played on a team that was judged to be the national champion when he was in high school by the USA Today. Yeah, Ignatius is a football dynasty. I grew up in the Cleveland area back in uh, the mid-late 80s when I was leaving to go to the University of Cincinnati. That's when Ignatius really came into their own. And they've been a dominant force ever since in high school football. Third down and seven coming up. 130 left in the third quarter. Kenner, and it's caught by P.J. Mays for a first down at the Miami 48-yard line. Freshman Gary Richardson made the tackle as Deontay Kenner thread the needle on third and seven. A lot of versatility from the running back position for Cincinnati. You got Cooper who can catch the ball in the backfield. You got his backup, P.J. Mays, who can do the same thing. And Garden, as a uh, fullback, is also very effective at catching the ball out of the backfield. One oh eight left in the third quarter. And it's a fumble. Looks like Miami has it. Yes, sir. P.J. Mays dropped it. And this could be the break Miami needs. Looks like, looks like P.J. really never got it. I think he started to look for the hole before he had the football. Didn't look it in and get his hands on it. Looked like Brian Potter had the best shot at recovering that football. No official announcement yet, but I think that Potter was the guy to get to it. Yeah. First and 10 for the Red Hawks. 
trailing by 19. Prentice goes in motion. It's a short pass. And it's a decent game, an eight yard pickup. Isaac Thomas making the tackle. Chauncey Henry with his first reception today. Well, the Bearcats defense has been in this situation before and has played pretty well today. Let's we'll see what they can do now. On second down and two, it's Travis Prentice. No, yes, it is a handoff to Prentice, and he will be dropped for a huge loss. Eddie Johnson again was right there waiting for him, wrapped him up, and just kept his legs driving, waiting for his help. The biggest improvement I've seen this year with Cincinnati's defense is their ability to swarm to the football. When I say swarm to the football, I mean everybody gets there very quickly, so you see a lot of group tackling and gang tackling going on, which allows, uh, allows them to really hold good running backs to minimal yardage. And here's all you need to know about the third quarter. In it, Travis Prentice had minus eight yards rushing. 15 minutes of football left in the battle for the victory bell. Our score, Cincinnati 49, Miami 30. Dan Horde, John Arena, Andy Trinan, and Statman Mark Wagner on the beautiful Miami campus here in Oxford, where Cincinnati has come from behind, rallying from an early nine-point deficit to build a 19-point lead with 15 minutes of football to go. We talk about action-packed. Today, you're getting action-packed football. On third down and five, it is incomplete. Ooh, and Travis Prentice was not expecting the throw. Quite a collision there between uh, Gossett and Isaac, and Isaac Thomas. Thomas. Like Thomas may have his bell rung a little bit. Head-to-head -head collision, that happens so often. To shake his cobwebs out, he may have to get out for a play or two. Miami initially had the punt team running out on the field, and now those guys have retreated. I wonder if Terry Hepner is reconsidering whether he needs to go for it with this much time left in the game. Let's watch the collision right here. It was actually a knee to the head. Knee to the head. That's a quick jar when you got two guys, you're meeting force on force like that. Both energies just hit and blend, and it's it's a pretty big impact. Isaac Thomas yeah. is on his feet. Let's get a little smelling salt. <laughs> get some water splashed on your face. We'll be back in a play or two. He'll have a headache tomorrow morning, that's for sure. And the punt team does come out for Miami. Cincinnati topping the previous record for most points scored by a team in this series. The old record 46, the new record 49 and perhaps counting. Got Tinker Keck back there this time for the punt return. What a play by that was, Gaylor. That was an amazing play. He caught it at the one, flipped it backward, where it's downed by Rod Clark. Cincinnati will start at its own one yard line. That was amazing. Again, Tinker Tech catch gonna let it go. Look at Gaylor. That's that's just a wonderful, wonderful special teams play. You won't see it many plays better than that in special teams. 1447 left. Cincinnati by 19. Welcome back to Oxford, where Cincinnati has the ball at its own one-yard line, trying to run out the fourth quarter with a 19-point lead. And a decent surge up front for the Cats as Deontay Kenner buys UC's offense a little breathing room. Well, you got your backs against the wall in this situation. They need to play ball-controlled offense. A turnover here is going to definitely relate to some type of uh, points by Miami. Rick Minter's Cats trying to snap a four-game losing streak and win for the third time this season. It's been an emotional roller coaster ride this year for Bearcat fans and players. Beating Wisconsin. Top running up front. Set up third down and about two. Let's check in with Andy Trinan. 
Guys, you often hear coaches talk about their defenses being on the field too much. Well, today the Bearcat offense has been on the field too much. Sophomore lineman Andy Weinheimer spent the last series on the bench getting sick. He is now back in the Bearcat lineup. Got to suck it up and get in there. Suck it up, Weinheimer. Get back in the game. <laughs> That's tough. Start to get dehydrated, drink a little bit too much water, it gets to you. Suck it up, or in his case, it sounds like spit it out. Either way. Third down and two. Cooper gains another first down for Cincinnati and gets to the 15-yard line. It's amazing what football players can put their bodies through. They could be sick and ill, physically dehydrated, get IVs, and get back out there and play. Ryan McCullough with another tackle for Miami. That was Garden who carried, not Robert Cooper. Look at that leg drive. Quadzilla, he's got the biggest quads I've ever seen. Looks like a mini Earl Campbell. 13, 17 to go. Cincinnati by 19. Robert Cooper pushed outside. And he fights to get back close to the line of scrimmage, one yard short of it. Take a look at some stats. Through three quarters. Wow. Neither defense will uh, look forward to looking back at the game films today. Rushing yards, unbelievable, 223 to 42 in Miami. Nobody would have thought that Travis Prentice would be held such minimal yardage with the overall rushing game of uh, Miami. UC defense really needs to be commended. They've done a super nice job. Prentice with 40 yards on 18 carries. Getting a little pep in the Miami defense. This time of the game right now, they start to get lulled a little bit. Got quite a bit of time left, 12 minutes or so. Right now, the momentum for the whole second half, for the most part, has been with Cincinnati. And uh, there was a turnover. They were, you know, Miami could not capitalize on it from the standpoint they couldn't score any points. So it gave Cincinnati the ball again. Cincinnati just wants to try to get a nice drive together here. And with third and 11 coming up, Cincinnati calls timeout. And we'll take one, two. 12.06 left, 49.30 Bearcats. The fewest yards Travis Prentice has ever had in a game since becoming the starter his sophomore year, 58. He has 40 so far today. Robert Cooper breaks it long oh. for first down. Stopped by Brian McCullough, who's had a great game, but has had to make way too many tackles from the free safety position as far as Miami is concerned. That's one of those bonus third third down conversions. You, you run the ball there because you don't want to throw it and turn, you know, turn the ball over, throw an interception. So you run the ball safe, be conservative, because you got a nice lead, and you've got someone like Cooper that rips it for a nice big gain. What a day for Robert Cooper. Oh, career day. Against your rival on a beautiful afternoon like this, this is something to remember for the rest of his life. First and 10 for the Bearcats. Cooper again. Marcellus Hammond with a big hit. Hammond said, hey, you've got the momentum once, once too many today. I'm going to deliver a blow on you. It was a nice tackle by Hammond. 29 carries, 183 yards for Robert Cooper. Two touchdown runs, one touchdown reception. Over 220 yards total offense for Cooper alone. That is impressive. Coop's career high is 191. Needs seven yards to tie that. Penner's pass, oh. caught for a short gain. Ashley Hunt, the tight end, hauled it in. Kind of a dangerous play for UC. Oh, that looked like it had potential interception and run back for a touchdown written all over it. Hunt did a good job getting his hands out and pulling that thing in quickly. That was close. You see now is just going to try to chew the clock up, take their time, and ideally keep the ball in play. Third down and five. The fake to Cooper. The long pass for Chapman, and he adjusts beautifully and makes the catch. Godsey yanks him out of bounds. A beautiful adjustment to a slightly underthrown ball by Antonio Chapman. That was a mature play. You got the defensive back that's running with Chapman. Watching Chapman. 
Chapman sees the ball, makes the adjustments before the defensive back can do so. 33 yards on the play. There's really nothing Godsey can do in that situation. When a receiver pulls up like that, there's going to be a cushion, and you're going to make the catch. 243 yards passing for Deontay Kenner. Cooper spinning to the 23 for a three yard gain. He's up to 187 yards rushing. James Bratcher, number 99, a senior, makes the tackle. The offensive line for Cincinnati starting to take over this football game. You're getting to see good, consistent push. Watch the line of scrimmage from this point on. You're gonna to start to see the offense consistently push the defensive lineman off the ball. The fullback carries, and Lloyd Garden gets somebody yard. Dan, why is it every time you make a statement like that, the next play they get stuffed in the running game? It's like the curse. I'm cursing the team. You are no soothsayer, my friend. <laughs> yeah, Garden and Ashley Hunt leaving the game. They spread it out here and go to four wide receiver set. We got Cooper here, and it's either going to be utilized as a blocking back or going to go out to the flat and catch a little pass over the middle, possibly, or in the flat. And the play clock runs out. Bearcats using too much time, but we penalized five yards. It's a painful penalty. That makes it third and ten now, and they're not really in field goal range with the personnel that they have. So that changes things significantly. A little tough one to watch for Terry Hepner. Long-time oh, yeah. defensive coach, not used to seeing teams have this kind of production against his Red Hawks. Same offensive set. Third down and ten. Kenner for Smeichel. Slightly overthrown and incomplete. McCullough in coverage. I think Deontay is indicating that Smeichel might have broke the wrong way. Uh, I think Deontay likes where he put that ball. And Tony Smeichel couldn't get Smeichel it. Smeichel wasn't quite there. Now the Bearcats are going to try for the long field goal. It will be approximately a 44-yarder for the true freshman from Louisiana, Jonathan Ruffin. Ruffin the kicker, they call him. Ruffin the kicker. His 44-yard kick is no good. And the score remains 49-30 Cincinnati. 8.31 left, the Bearcats by 19. Not very difficult to find beautiful scenery in Oxford on a lovely fall day. One thing about the last drive, UC was not able to capitalize with points, but they did take a lot of time off that clock. And Miami starts at the 26-yard line. Mike Bath, incomplete for Trevor Gaylor, second down and 10 coming up. Offensively, you're gonna see Miami do two things. Obviously, try to throw the football, and when they use Travis Prentice, Travis Prentice is probably going to be throwing the ball as well out to the uh, short side of the field, out into the flat, maybe across the middle a little bit, and use him more as kind of the catching receiver to hopefully break a big play outside. Running the ball at this point is not going to be very advantageous for them because they need to get a lot of points in a short period of time. Travis Prentice with 40 yards rushing, minus eight in the second half. Bath to Gaylor, makes the nice one-handed catch. And he gets up to the 46-yard line for a 20-yard gain. Gary Ruff and Jeff Burrow make the tackle. Ruff's done a nice job stepping in and really contributing well. Good slant pattern to Gaylor. Just let him catch on the fly and run. He's got good open field running ability. 
Gaylor closing in on the all-time record for receiving yards in a career at Miami. And on that catch, he gets a lot closer. Entering the game, Trevor Gaylor was 154 yards short of Jay Hall's all-time record. Before that catch, he had 96 receiving yards, so he's going to be about 20, 25 yards short of a new record. Prentice on the draw play. Travis Prentice with his best run all day. His previous long run had been 10. Gets about a dozen there before Troy Evans and Gary Ruff bring him down. Here comes Miami. They've got some momentum on their side right now. Gaylor, Bath, and Prentice. Those are the guys who are going to get him back in this game. Right now, they're producing. Bath nearly intercepted. Wow. He tried to hit Nate Sexton on that little slant, and it was right in the hands of a Bearcat defender. That would have put Miami under if you see what intercepted that ball. Gary Ruff has one interception in this game, and boy, should have had two. He's really playing well today. He's doing a good job tackling. He's done a good job playing the pass. He's really stepped in and contributed nicely. Well, you like your strong safety to be rough. And the Bearcats have done that literally today with the name very is rough. There yep. you go. Second and 10 from the 14. Bath. And that'll be incomplete. Little pushing and shoving. Almost offensive pass interference, almost pushed off. He's Jason, got warned by the ref there, too. Jason Branch, the intended receiver. Jeff Burrow in coverage. A lot of hostility starts to brew, and you got a rival like this. Miami's still in it. Miami scores right here. This is still a football game. I mean, so right now, those guys in that huddle realize, hey, this isn't over. If we score here, we can still win this game. Third down and 10. Gaylor makes a great catch for the Miami touchdown. That was a great catch. Right up over Tinker Keck. There's nothing Keck could have done. That was a great effort by Gaylor. Trevor Gaylor's having a great game today. Trevor Gaylor with his second touchdown catch of the day, and Miami will go for two. Trailing 49-36. Try to cut the margin to 11. Marcus Smith comes in to play fullback. Haven't seen much of him today. For the two-point conversion, and it is knocked down by Ruff. The two-point conversion does not work. And Cincinnati leads by 13. 7.38 left in the game. Ruff does a nice job running back to the corner, getting his hand up. This has got to be one of the better performances Ruff has put together. He's overall playing a really good ball. That hurts Miami a little bit. UC has got to get together a nice drive and eat up some of that clock. Look at Bath, fires that ball. Takes the hit, still gets the ball complete to Gaylor. You see that, that's a six foot four advantage right there. Big receivers can jump up for the jump ball and bring it down for the touchdown. Six catches, 135 yards receiving for Trevor Gaylor. So he is 19 yards short of the career receiving yardage record at Miami. I think we'll probably see that record broken here today. As big a game as he's had. Yeah, it really is. He's, he's doing real well. He actually had more yardage last year against the Bearcats, 144. He can really hurt you because he catches the ball and he can do so much with the ball after the catch. It becomes a very dangerous threat. Ooh. 
Chapman tackled at the 21. That's where the Bearcats will have it first and 10. Looked like there he was tackled by about five guys at once. I have to peel Chapman up off the grass. Everybody just hits a wall. Boom, hits a wall of Redskins. Good coverage by Miami. I should say Red Hawks, I stand corrected. No Miami fan will complain. I realize that. That's Cooper. As he weaves his way to the 27 yard line, Brian Potter with a tackle. But Cooper just looks like he has endless energy today. Just keeps carrying the ball and does a nice job. This is one of those situations again, the offensive line's got to take over the game. Good blocking. Everybody's locked up on their defensive man. That's all you can ask your offensive lineman to do. Five yard gain for Coop. A new career high in rushing yardage, 193. That's great. Can't say enough about a guy like Cooper. Again, he's one of those gritty players. You're seeing it right now. He just fights and scratches for every single yard he gets. Three more there. He's clawing his way through. He's got good stamina because he's been involved a lot with his offense today and he still has a lot of energy. Fans come to life. Big third down and three play coming up for UC. The blitz. And Robert Cooper appears to have a first down. He needed to get to the 33. It looks like that's where he was able to get to. He and Cohen butted up. Cooper may have won the battle. Well, that was tough. That, that may have broken the back of the uh, Miami Red Hawks. Basically, every time you pick up a first down, it's a couple of minutes off the clock. That's exactly right. It's a couple of minutes that Miami does not have right now. Cincinnati by 13. Robert Cooper. Wow. Closing in on 200 yards rushing. Four and five yards a pop. That's impressive. Offensively right now, they're just going to take their time. Let the linemen catch their breath, reset, and really work that clock. That's the nice thing about Deontay Kenner being a little older is he can now work the clock to his advantage and really let the, the play clock run down, call the play, and let the guys get up to the line of scrimmage and take their time. 34 carries, 204 yards for Robert Cooper. Small girl. And out two Not much there as Ryan Terry made the tackle. You said something earlier about Miami and the fact that they have a lot of uh, walk-ons that contribute in play. And as you take a look here at Cooper again, just fighting for extra yardage. It's one thing I respect Miami about so much is they, they really put together solid workhorse type players. I mean, these guys, some of these guys that walk on earn scholarships and end up being top players on their whole football roster. And uh, it really says a lot for the character of this football program. Their players play hard. Cooper will not get the first down. He stopped at the 37, maybe the 38. It's about two yards short. Cincinnati will have to punt. Clock starts to move fast in this situation. 344 left with the clock winding down. It's like Mentor's thinking here, is he gonna kick or possibly go for it? 
in a situation right now where if he goes for it, they'll, they'll pretty much end the game. If they sustain the drive. And Cincinnati lets the play clock run down to one second before calling a timeout. 3.26 left in the game. Yeah, Minner, I guess, is going to punt the football, which does make sense. Put his defense back on the field. That's one thing Rick Minner does is he lets his team be very aware of, hey, I'm a defensive coach. I'll put you guys out on the field. I know you guys can win the football game by holding the offense. What's nice, though, is you get a coach that's defensive-minded, kind of walks that walk as far as being a defensive guy. You start to see that attitude in the whole defense as a whole, kind of have that same type of attitude. Well, we're going to win the football games. We're not going to allow the big plays. We're going to stop these guys. And uh, defense is so much attitude. That's so important. Adam Wolfeck to punt. His one punt today went 63 yards. One short of his career high. High spiraling kick. Buxton at the 12. Tackled at the 10. Eddie Johnson, nice tackle. And the Cincinnati team that's given up 21 punt return yards all season appears to have subtracted from that total. Look at this tackle by Eddie Johnson. Almost slips away, but just gets able to hold on and get his hands on the guy. Looked like he got his hands on the mask, though. Yeah, a little bit. There's a little, little incidental five-yarder. Sometimes that just cannot be avoided. You know, you're flying through the air like that, your hand gets on her face mask, I mean, there's nothing else you can do. Who would think that uh, the Miami co-eds would be sunbathing today at the end of October? I don't hear you complaining. 3.12 left. Bath for Gaylor, incomplete. Well, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna get, he's gonna keep pumping that well. He's gonna pump that well and try to get the ball to Gaylor if he can. That's his go-to guy. Daryl Ransom, excuse me, applying the pressure. Not to my voice, but to the quarterback. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both. It's a little fair balance. That's one thing Keith Willis has brought to this defense so so much is the attitude up front for the defensive lineman to get pressure on the quarterback. He's been a real asset for Rick Minner's defense. There he goes. I'll tell you what, Bath fought like crazy on that play. Yes, he did. He's frustrated right now. He's such a competitor. Just wants to make something happen. It's going to help them tremendously having him back next year. They're going to lose Travis Prentice, but to have Bath back, it's going to help him a great deal. He's been a leader. We saw it last year. He really stepped into that leadership role. This year, obviously, he's been a very strong leader. And uh, next year, being a senior, he's going to really be the glue to that offense. Third down and 10. Gaylor cannot make the catch at midfield. Argues for interference, but there are no flags. That was another close when the ball came right in when contact was made. Tinker's got his hands on him, which is fine. That looked like interference to me. It's amazing the calls. You know, UC has, has had three calls, or I should say Miami has had three bad calls against them, or calls that haven't been made, and we're playing in Yeager Stadium. Generally, that never happens. Fourth down and 10. 
Bath to Sexton, incomplete. No flags. Cincinnati will take over at the Miami 15-yard line. Miami's chances are done at this point. It's a big win for Cincinnati's program from the standpoint of, again, we talked about it a little earlier, big emotional up and down season. They beat Wisconsin. They open up strong against Kent, lose to Troy State, beat Wisconsin, play well against Ohio State, and, uh, and then from there it's been downhill. So to kind of regroup and get another victory kind of helps these guys finish out hopefully strong for the rest of the season. And there's your star of the game, Robert Cooper. 208 yards rushing, two touchdowns, 47 yards receiving, one touchdown. And he adds to the rushing total, or at least tries to, before being pushed back from the line of scrimmage. Brian McCullough, a name we have called all day, comes flying up to make the tackle, and Miami uses one of its three remaining timeouts. Cullis played well all day. He's been involved in passing game, running game. He's stopped everything he could possibly stop. He's one of those guys where you don't expect to come in and be a, a tremendous standout. Comes in and you've heard his name today more than anyone else's on Miami's defense. Well, all this week, in a not so subtle reminder, there's been an empty glass case in the Cincinnati locker room. That's right. With the following words on it, bring back the bell. A lot of tradition here behind this football game. You got UC who's able to step in and have 530 yards total offense against one of their big rivals on the road and bring back that victory bell, especially after being embarrassed last season. It was an embarrassment. I know Rick Minner was uh, very upset. Still had some wounds a year later and wanted to put together a good performance today. And his offense and defense has just done just that. A penalty flag on the field. And a penalty flag, perhaps for an illegal substitution for Cincinnati. Moves it back five yards. You couldn't have asked for a better day, Dan, to watch college football. Perfect weather, beautiful atmosphere. 25,000 people here at Jaeger Stadium, which is, you know, a really nice attendance. Overall, a good day. And Miami is nothing to be ashamed of. They, they've played well today. I mean, for the most part, uh, they made a lot of big plays early on. Travis Prentice didn't have his normal day, but for the most part, uh, they've, they've done a, a fair job and have been very competitive. Second and 14. P.J. Mays keeps fighting. Hammond and Godsey make the tackle. Miami calls a timeout, 2.25 left. P.J. Mays again does a good job. He runs up into a congested middle, but again, he has the wherewithal to bounce it back outside. Nothing took, you know, nothing happened, but the key here is you got a young guy that's gonna step in and take over the throne next year for Cooper. He's got a really nice package. They love the fact that he can catch the ball in the backfield. It makes their offense more versatile. Jimbo Fisher does a really nice job using the talent that they do have to put points on the board. I mean, they don't have the, the deepest receiving core in the world, but he puts them in positions where they can catch the football, do nothing too creative, but he does a good job with their strategy keeping defenses off balance. And uh, they run an offense, or an offense very similar to Purdue's offense, again, that's just hard to defend. You don't see it week in and week out, you know, four and five receiver sets. And it makes it hard for people to defend. This is Mays. And it'll be fourth down at about 12 at the 17 yard line. Looks like P.J. Mays on that play had a, a little piggyback ride for the, from the defensive lineman. Watch the replay here. See P.J. takes it to the left. We had Garden feeling. This is a lot of weight to have on your back. Ah, finally gets him down. See the rest of the schedule. You got Louisville for homecoming next week, which is obviously is going to be a big game. Louisville will bring a lot of people there. 
Then on the road to East Carolina, East Carolina's got a solid football team this year. They're going to have their work cut out for them. The Bearcats going down to East Carolina, and they come back home to finish off at Memphis. Memphis having a very good year for the most part, almost beat Tennessee. So UC's got their schedule cut out for them for the rest of the year. Jonathan Ruffin tacks on a 35-yard field goal, and for the first time in 104 meetings between Cincinnati and Miami, one team has scored 50 or more points. It's 52-36. I know you hate to dwell on it, but you look back to the first quarter of this game in the first five minutes, and who would have thought that UC would have put together a performance like this? I really give a lot of credit to the coaching staff to keep the guys focused on what's important, which is executing the game plan and not panicking. Every time you get in a big rival type situation, guys tend to play with so much emotion, they almost forget about some of the basics that got them there or the basics that had come into play as far as winning a football game. And uh, UC did a good job kind of separating the emotion, if you will, and just focusing on playing football. And they've done it real well. 52 points is impressive for any Bearcat team. 2-11 left. You see by 16. Miami's going to try to break something here. Be fairly, you can get very creative with your uh, kickoff return. A high short one that bounces before being caught Ooh. by number 30, who's still on his feet. Ouch. Andre Jackson almost broke it. Boy, Andre Jackson doesn't get the ball very often. He got it that time and wanted to do something with it. Big hit. Remain has kept his balance and has continued to turn up field. From midfield, Bath finds Sullivan for a first down. Let's check in with Andy Trinan. Guys, it looks like the victory bell is coming back to Cincinnati. They just brought the bell back out here onto the field. This is the bell that goes to the winning team and UC is well on the way to bringing this bell back to Cincinnati. I tell you what, that's great tradition. I was fortunate enough to have it in the locker room when I was at UC for two of the years and lost it for two of the years, so I know both sides of that emotional swing. When you lose it, it's not fun. When you get it back, it's fun. It's that basic, but it's so nice to have, especially when it comes down to recruiting, because Cincinnati and Miami do compete against uh, each other in recruiting some of these high school kids. And when you can bring kids in and you know, you're gonna visit Miami one week and you're in Cincinnati this weekend and you get to see the bell in the locker room and it just kind of gives that school the extra edge showing, hey, you know, we're the leaders in this, in this rivalry here. When you got a rivalry like this, it's year after year, you know, one team's gonna be the leader one year, the next team's gonna be the leader the next. There's no dominant force, if you will. Last year, again, was kind of a fluke, but most of the games have been pretty close and pretty hairy. So bringing home a trophy like that is well worth it. Trevor Gaylor has another touchdown. 24 yards. And it's not quite over. If Miami can pick up a two-point conversion, the difference would be eight. Obviously, another TD and another two-point conversion could force OT. The Miami is out of timeouts, 112 left. Miami Red Hawks, they never die. Trevor Gaylor has just become the all-time yardage king for receivers at Miami University, breaking Jay Hall's career record. Needed 154 coming in. He's up to 168. Wow, what a game. You know, people that have watched this game on television and people here in the stands, you've seen three NFL players today. You've got Trevor Gaylor, you've got uh, Prentice, Oh, what an attempt 
by Ty Buxton, but he could not make the diving catch. That should do it for Cincinnati. And you've also got Dustin Cohen. You've got three guys that are going to probably play on Sunday. So Miami's got a lot of talent on this football team. It's good to see one of these players break records like that. I imagine you'll see an onside kick here by Miami. Three plays, 52 yards, 35 seconds, a good quick strike. Well, I'll tell you, Bath is going to miss Gaylor next year. That's one of his favorite targets. Bath has passed for 352 yards today and four touchdowns. That's a good day. He's got nothing to be ashamed of. Travis Prentice, this is amazing. 54 yards. This is the fewest in, like I said here, 32 games. Cincinnati has done a really nice job shutting him down. You look at Ron Dane. They didn't really shut Ron Dane down. He rushed for over 250 yards, but they shut down every other aspect of their offense. Uh, or actually, Dane, 231 yards to be exact against uh, Cincinnati. But they did nothing else offensively. Today, you've got Gaylor has done a nice job. Bath has done a nice job. They really shut down Prentice and kept them off balance. Unusual onside kick. And Cincinnati recovers. Good. There is a penalty flag on the play. I think it's against Miami. They have crossed I think the someone line. went over the line before the kick. Yeah. UC will decline. That should do it. Yep. A little quick on the takeoff. We'll probably come out now and kill it and be done. When you lose this game, as far as being a Bearcat, when you lose this game, that's a long drive down Route 27 back to Cincinnati, even though it's 45 miles. But when you win the game, it's, it's a heck of a lot of fun. So these Bearcats are going to enjoy their ride home today. Waiting to get everything settled down here on the field. Looks like Rick Menner still got the seeds working for him over there. I'll tell you, you, know, you talk about a guy like Rick Menner, he's been around so long, it's refreshing seeing a coach last at UC for more than four or five seasons. It really helps kind of solidify the whole the whole process behind building a football program. You want to get a coach that's going to be around, that's going to start building tradition. You cannot build tradition when coaches come and go every three or four years. And that's one thing that we've always struggled with in Cincinnati is, you know, I played for two different coaches, and most of the guys that, uh, that I've played with or that I know as far as the alumni base have all played for numerous coaches. And Miami's kind of went through the same thing. You talk about their cradle of coaches. They've got a lot of great guys that have come through this program, but the problem is they haven't been able to keep somebody. And that was just obvious with Randy Walker leaving last, uh, this past year up to Northwestern. Because they get a good coach that's, you know, spends some time here. Opportunity uh, always comes up and they end up leaving. So Cincinnati and Miami both have had difficult times keeping coaches over the years. Fortunately, right now, Rick Minner looks like he's here to stay, at least for the meanwhile. They got to take advantage of why he's here. Two snaps should do it for Cincinnati. Yeah, that should be it. No call today. I don't know what the holdup is here. Yeah, they're just going to take a knee and down it. That's a potential flag right there. This is one of those potential bench clearing bras. You got a guy like, you can't blame Miami for trying to make a play like that, but. Deontay's playing with the clock there, not quite getting down yet. He's going to open himself up to getting hurt. Take a knee, get down. That'll do it. Well, Rick Minner's team played well today. 
Miami has nothing to be ashamed of. They've got a solid football team. I imagine when they go on the road, well, they're home again next week against Akron, then they play at Ohio University, and then home against Buffalo, and I'll imagine they have a good chance of running, uh, winning out the rest of the season. Players are looking for the bell. And there they go, ring that victory bell. That's what college football is all about, is tradition. The Bearcats are bringing home that bell today. For an in-depth look at today's game, join us for Inside UC Football with head coach Rick Minter tomorrow morning at 11.30. You'll see how UC was able to contain Travis Prentice, limiting him to 54 yards. And you'll see how Robert Cooper had one of the best days for a running back in UC history. Ninth best, in fact, 37 carries for 209 yards. He also caught a touchdown pass in addition to running for two scores. The Cats home next week to take on Louisville. They're taking the bell back to Cincinnati. Our final score today, Cincinnati 52, Miami 42. For John Arena and Andy Trinan, I'm Dan Horde. So long from Oxford.